choice to abide in the face of terror. This is the existential hero's way, which differs from the average person. Instead of hiding within the illusions, he sees his impotence and vulnerability. Living with the voluntary consciousness of death, the heroic individual can choose to despair or to make a leap of faith. Man cannot endure his own littleness unless he can translate it into meaningfulness on the highest possible level. Becker indicates, however, that the truth about the need for heroism is not easy for anyone to admit, and so we disguise our struggle by piling up figures in a bank book to reflect privately our sense of heroic worth. To become conscious of what one is doing to earn his feeling of heroism is the main self-analytic problem of life. The Stoics, on the other hand, do not believe in the terror of death. It is a natural process and should not be feared. They practice memento mori, meditating on your mortality, to remember that we all have to die. Marcus Aurelius writes, Think of yourself as dead. You have lived your life. Now take what's left and live it properly. Death allows one to fully live one's life. For it is not death a man should fear, but rather never beginning to live. For the Stoics, death is not anxiety inducing or crippling, it is part of nature. Epictetus writes, I have to die. If it is now, well, then I die now. If later, then now I will take my lunch, since the hour for lunch has arrived, and dying I will tend to later. If every second counts as dying, this allows one not to take anything for granted in this life, and to fully immerse oneself, being aware that life is temporal. This allows us to focus on the things that really matter. Constantly run down the list of those who felt intense anger at something, the most famous, the most unfortunate, the most hated, the most whatever, and ask, where is all that now? Smoke, dust, legend, or not even a legend, and how trivial the things we want so passionately are. Nietzsche also embraces and celebrates death, and talks about the free death. He writes, Many die too late, and some die too early. The doctrine still sounds strange. Die at the right time. To be sure, how could the person who never lives at the right time ever die at the right time? Would that he were never born. Thus I advise these superfluous. Everyone regards dying as important. But death is not yet a festival. As of yet, people have not learned how to consecrate the most beautiful festivals. I show you the consummating death that becomes a goat and a promise to the living. The consummated one dies his death, victorious, surrounded by those who hope and promise. Thus one should learn to die, and there should be no festival where such a dying person does not swear oaths to the living. Nietzsche establishes a view of the correct death, which one chooses freely and which occurs at the right time. Death should be a consummation to life, dignified by meaning and purpose, emanating from the life that is ending. In contrast, he writes about the preachers of death. There are preachers of death, and the earth is full of those to whom one must preach renunciation of life. There are those with consumption of the soul. Hardly are they born when they begin to die, and too long for doctrines of weariness and renunciation. They would like to be dead, and we should welcome their wish. Let us beware of waking the dead and disturbing these living coffins. They encounter a sick or a very old person or a corpse, and right away they say, life is refuted. Nietzsche rejects the melancholy of encountering a sick or a very old person or a corpse as a repudiation of life. He illustrates the manner in which living men can be effectively dead. There are forms of death other than ceasing to be physically alive. There are the living dead, those who avoid the demands of existence through escape into work and through renunciation of life. Socrates, the founder of Western philosophy, may well be one who practiced dying at the right time. At the age of 70, he was sentenced to death. The Oracle of Delphi, which found the sum of human wisdom in the expression, Know thyself, had declared that there was no one wiser than Socrates. Thus he began his mission to educate people with his famous irony, I know that I know nothing. He was known as the gadfly of Athens, asking question after question in order to expose the contradictions in the thoughts and ideas of people. It was an attempt made to use critical reflection to call into question traditional beliefs and ways of thinking. This is known as the Socratic method. 
As is described in Plato's Apology, Socrates was sentenced to death by drinking hemlock for impiety against the pantheon of Athens and for corrupting the youth. In the trial, he stated his famous dictum: "The unexamined life is not worth living." He was given the chance to live in exile, but refused. He spent his last day in prison with his friends visiting him and offering him an opportunity to escape, which he declined. His enigmatic final words were: "Crito, we owe a cock to Asclepius. Pay it and do not neglect it." Socrates is thanking the goddess Clebius for healing him of the sickness of life by the cure of death. The cock, which gives hopeful proclamation of the coming new day, symbolized rebirth and afterlife for ancient Greeks and was the offering to the healing goddess Clebius. Socrates is simply offering thanks and pointing to the afterlife. He invokes the only god known to revive the dead. Who Socrates suggests, with his last words, has already helped heal both Socrates himself and his followers from the fever of earthly life. He tells his friends to work to purify their souls, to serve others with compassion, and to dedicate their lives to the community's health. Carl Jung believes that one must be as ready to live as to die. He writes, "Death is psychologically as important as birth, and like it, is an integral part of life." As a doctor, I make every effort to strengthen the belief in immortality, especially with older patients when such questions come threateningly close. For seen in correct psychological perspective, death is not an end but a goal, and life's inclination towards death begins as soon as the meridian is passed. Jung's entire psychology is predicated on the existence of psychic oppositions in the human psyche. He stressed the need to hold the tension of opposites. Death is inevitable, and to think otherwise is to live in denial and to live against one's instincts. Jung criticizes contemporary culture in its one-sidedness about this pair of opposites, with our almost complete focus on life and denial of death. It tells us to prepare ourselves for the second half of our life. But how should we face death when we grow older? He writes, "Death is an important interest, especially to an aging person. A categorical question is being put to him, and he is under an obligation to answer it. To this end, he ought to have a myth about death, for reason shows him nothing but the dark pit into which he is descending." Myth, however, can conjure up other images for him, helpful and enriching pictures of life in the land of the dead. If he believes in them or greets them with some measure of credence, he is being just as right or just as wrong as someone who does not believe in them. But while the man who despairs marches toward nothingness, the one who has placed his faith in the archetype. Follows the tracks of life and lives right into his death. Both, to be sure, remain in uncertainty, but the one lives against his instincts, the other with them. A myth is not something that we create rationally, but rather through observing our psychic life, through active imagination, dreams, intuitions, and synchronicities or meaningful coincidences. The lifelong process of individuation brings one's unconscious contents into consciousness, shifting the focus of the ego with the self. Jung recounts his visions that followed his near-death experience. As he hung on the edge of death, he saw himself high up in space and noticed a large granite block floating in space, which had a temple. As Jung approached the steps leading into the temple, he experienced a strange thing. I consisted of my own history, and I felt with great certainty this is what I am. This experience gave me a feeling of extreme poverty, but at the same time of great fullness. There was no longer anything I wanted or desired. I existed in an objective form. I was what I had been and lived. At first, the sense of annihilation predominated, or having been stripped or pillaged. But suddenly, that became of no consequence. Everything seemed to be past. There was no longer any regret that something had dropped away or been taken away. On the contrary, I had everything that I was, and that was everything. As I approached the temple, I had the certainty that I was about to enter an illuminated room and would meet there all those people to whom I belong in reality. There, I would at last understand what historical nexus I or my life fitted into. I would know why I had come into being and where my life was flowing.
Jung then saw an image of his doctor telling him that he must return to Earth, and his vision ceased. Compared to the freedom he felt in his vision, living felt like a prison. Back to the box system. By day, Jung was depressed. However, by night, he was swept up in ecstasy, with envisions that gave him the experience of the odor of sanctity, a neoma of inexpressible sanctity in the room, whose manifestation was the Mysterium Conjunctionis. Jung's last major work was in fact called Mysterium Conjunctionis, completed in his 81st year on the synthesis of the opposites in alchemy and psychology. He wrote, "Only with the mysterium conjunctionis was my psychology definitely situated in reality, and was historically cemented as a whole. With this, my task was finished, my work done and accomplished. The moment I achieved my goal, I accessed the most extreme limits of what was scientifically conceived for me." The transcendent, the essence of the archetype itself, beyond which it is no longer possible to express anything else in the scientific aspect. Years later, Jung could look back on his visions and say, "It is impossible to convey the beauty and intensity of emotion during those visions. They were the most tremendous things I have ever experienced." Not a product of imagination. The visions and experiences were utterly real. There was nothing subjective about them. They all had a quality of absolute objectivity. Polly, why do you care so much about dying on this hill and fighting this battle and traveling freely? It goes speak free, move free. If you're right. losing those two, you got nothing left. Fuck nothing. slaves. If you can't speak freely and move freely, you're a fucking prisoner. Don't you get that? The thing is, is it's not about the land you got. It's like the rights you got, the property you got, whatever sends off you. It's about getting, keeping, and having it in the sense of the status and jurisdiction, not in the sense of, you know, the prideful, egotistical state of consciousness. So tell me all about how you're gonna have a thousand dollar piece of land or a ten million dollar piece of land, but you really don't own it because you gotta pay taxes on it. When are we going to address the law of the land versus statute, policy, and code? Hello, that's what brought us into this interaction. Remember, they don't have a right, nor is it sound procedure, to、uh, possess or to try to take tribute from land that is supposed to be owned and controlled. And at the whim of the man or the woman who's claiming such, and has the documentation and record to prove it, this is absurd. So, when are you folks going to activate your conviction in your mind and heart, first and foremost, and say this is bizarre, this is incorrect behavior? I'm not interested what the code even says. I want to have a conversation with my servants, with my representatives. I want to know how this benefits me, and if it doesn't benefit me, it's a detriment to me. How could that be lawful? But when are folks going to take a stand? When are they going to put the proper status and jurisdiction on record? When are they going to make their claim or do conditional acceptance with these state of agents and say, "I'll accept everything and even pay you twice as much as what you're asking for"? If you would just substantiate your motherfucking claim in something that is sensible and lawful, show it to me. When are you gonna do that? Cause I don't see how much land and whatever the fuck else you're gonna get and avoid that experience and ever feel like a real man or woman here, a real American, a real Canadian. I think you're always gonna know in the back of your mind or in your subconscious you're a bitch ass slave and never rose to the occasion. Cause you're too scared of having to go sit with yourself in a box. You got owned, which has been done from the beginning of time by everyone,、like、including a the man you all say you worship and started societies off of. I'm waiting. That thing is waiting. You're all quietly desperate and waiting for the inevitable to take hold of you. Anyway, why not activate and do something different today? I'm just asking questions. If you're tacitly agreeing with a presumption and assumption, and you're not rebutting it or asking for the delegation of authority and the facts of the matter, you're already pimp. Call it a day. Just go be a good fucking hoe and live the rest of your life from that venue and that status. I'm not mad at it. It only increases my value and rarity with the universal force and with the people. So go ahead, be a good pet, pet slave, submissive, broken hoe, and do what the fuck you're told to do.
and hope that you die with enough representations of value to make you feel like a human fucking being. I'm down with it. You like it. I love it. Man, that guy's angry. Uh, we got Brian O'Shea already back there. We got Jackie Fox. We got Joshua. Greetings, Joshua. How are you? Brian O'Shea, how are you? I'm good. You're muted, Joshua. Hey, guys. What's going on, Josh? It's been a long Jackie time. Fox is here. It's been a long time. Long time no see. Really How old are you now? Like 21? I'm 20. You're 20 now? I just turned 20 for my birthday. Yeah, you're getting up there in age. This kid's getting up there. Every time I get... Every, look, it's getting nighttime, so... Is it true that you were talking shit on me last night with Tommy? Um... Okay. You know, it's fascinating, right? If that is true, if that's the case, I have no reason to believe that uh, the Jeep Jeep girl creature is lying. Uh, Tommy has reached a new low, like I'm sure many of them have, because, you know, I go like I do my periods where I check in on the miscreants, find out, you know, how much they're fixating and obsessing over me. Uh, and then there's times where I just get back to like my life and what I'm doing and I pay them no mind. But it wouldn't surprise me if Tommy and others have reached a new low of getting a hold of Joshua uh, and attempting to get him to speak bad on me and diminish me uh, and my character. Right? It really just, again, proves who and what you are and what you're about. So just keep doing it. I'm, I'm, I'm okay. I'm not mad at Joshua if he did that. Right? I, I've done nothing to Joshua. I've done nothing but offer him a platform and a place to speak. He knows that I care about him. He should know that. So why he would have anything to say bad uh, probably he doesn't have a reason, right? He's, he's, he's a younger guy, <clears throat> but you know, Tommy being the snake that he is would compel a, a younger person to try to disparage someone just for their own, um, you know, personal pleasure and aggrandization. Your thoughts on any of that, Brian O'Shea, about the sick and twisted constant division and dysfunctional tactics and desperation and clinging and clutching of folks onto me and my beingness? Yeah, you know, the one-on-one -on -one work, the rising of the, raising of the dead, like this is uh, the good work, the great work, you know. And, um, people want to say, oh, that's a miracle. He like actually rose someone out of the grave. But it's like, I mean, it's, isn't it the same exact work? If people are like spiritually dead. Yeah, most folks look at life and they only see the physical manifestation. They don't see the meaning purpose and the formality behind the incarnation and the manifestation, the illusion. Um, so yeah, like when it talks about, you know, giving sight to the blind and, 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 you know, raising the dead to the living, it's probably metaphorical, right? As in, if you do facilitation with folks, kind of like the monks do at a certain point, vision becomes more clear. You're more conscious and aware, you know how to respond. You know, like raising the dead probably isn't taking a dead corpse with no life in it and putting life back in it and it just getting up and dancing around the room like that Bones creature in that one movie, just a skeleton dancing around the room. It's probably not that. It's probably like allegorical in the sense of kind of like what we do here, maybe even. Oh, wait, let me not get into that. Very egotistical and narcissistic to claim that we're all able to have the same experience as the Christ of being of scripture. That was precisely the whole point of the story and telling everyone about it. Your thoughts on any of that? Yeah, then as we're doing the one-on-one -on -one work with uh, Craven, you know, I, I start to try to get a commitment from him, all right, over the next 24 hours, because he does say he wants to homeschool. What's with your sound, time. bro? What's with your sound, your leaf blunt? Who, 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 Jackie, it's Jackie yeah. Fox, what are we doing? Yeah, so. You know, once I'm sort of, you know, he's like, yes, I understand that it's a prison school. I would like to get him out. Blah, blah, blah. He's coming up with all these excuses about why he can't. Was that the same guy who told you he didn't care and also he was happy and that we were just thinking too much? Yeah, it was him and Aussie seem to have similarities in that regard. I can't. 
Yeah, it's called being a bullshitter. He did say he would show up 24 hours from now and uh, fuck the Starbucks. Uh, Yeah, it's called this right here. You got owned. You got punked out like a bitch. And you don't want to acknowledge it. You don't want to admit it. That's what Satanism is. That's what Satanism is. All these folks got punked out, duped out, played out, they're hoed out, pimped out, and they just don't want to cop to it. They, it's just easier to say, well, I don't care, and hey, I'm happy, hey, I'm comfortable, I can go to Slave Mart and get some crisps. Your thoughts? Yeah, then he says, okay, I'll make a commitment that 24 hours from now, I'm going to come back with accountability of my progress towards getting my children into homeschooling. But we'll see, you know what I mean? And, but it regardless it motivated me because it's like okay well what I, what can i do over the next 24 hours i could go to that garden plot we're having a garden meeting in a couple of days i got shit i could do with my car like i have a million things i could do to make incremental progress towards what i'm trying to get done so through talking to him about his progress you know it, it's motivating and inspiring me so either way if he does it or not as long as i show up tomorrow with some sort of progress then you know, I'm on the right path and we, you know, and then we go back to the one-on-ones with other people. Cause it's not so much with these other people like, Oh, I'm going to help these other people. Uh, they'll say, Oh, Brian O'Shea, why are you being egotistical and narcissistic and judgmental? You're just a piss drinking hobo. You don't have any power and influence in this realm. They'll say the same thing to me minus the piss drinking, right? If I'm going to drink my urine, I'm probably not going to tell anyone about it. I'm just being real, but I don't. Right. And, 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 you know, that's the, that's the diminishing, right? That's the capitalist diminutio maxima. The system does that. So people in and of the system try to do that. They try to diminish your influence, your power and your capacity. And you just have to remind yourself, no, that's not the case. I have firsthand evidence and facts and experience that I can go into venues and speak truth and call folks back to the truth that we should be living and inspire people to do and be better. And then that motivates me to do and be better. See, that's a feedback loop process of ministry and bearing witness and testimony i would know and you would know on some level so you can't explain to somebody an experience they haven't had and even more scary you can't show somebody an experience that they should feel and understand and embody and have them accept it for what it is they always think there's got to be something else going on here and it's like no some folks actually want what's real and true some folks actually care some folks actually are open to connecting with the most high and receiving the blessings and grace, not only of understanding and self-knowledge, but value in various forms. God forbid. So yeah, that's the then, good news. I would think, go ahead. Yeah, and then flow state shows up. Uh, oh, when's the last time you wash your hair? We got Aussie. How much education do you have? Like they're like, they're the demons in the background as I'm right. like laser focused on, okay, you show, I need a commitment for you to show up tomorrow. You got all this like background noise. Right. They're like, oh no, stay with us. Do what we do, which is nothing. Believe in nothing. Be nothing. Just gossip and drama and fight. You can get money off that. It's exactly what they are. It's the closest thing to, if you had to characterize it, a spiritual dynamic of demonic or demonly possessed, demonically possessed entities who seek to get you off your track and off your course. And to make you feel like you don't have any power and any influence. So, you know, again, this is why you could say whatever you want about me. It's not that I don't have that in me as well. I just am aware of it and I'm going to use it like a mask. There's times where I'm going to put on the, the, the fuck stain mask, right? Not, not Don't use the term you use. We use the moniker here, right? If you have to mention them, because I've been ignoring these folks. I don't know if you've noticed. Slave Cot couldn't handle himself yesterday because he realized he gave me keys a week ago. I knew he gave them to me. I accepted. I just didn't go over there. I'm so, again, in my lane, focused on me, going to get land, other things in life, sticking to my three hours, healing my body, right? You know, one of these women is going gonna, is gonna to send me a new machine, like wizard now. We're doing the wizard, right? USC, one, two, three, your shit's also mine. I'm quoting that. I'm, I'm taking that right from Wizard. So now they're going to get me. <laughs> no shades about to crack up. They're going to get me to fucking machine. I didn't ask for that. I was going to get it myself. I just doubted it. 
because everyone online is, is reviewing and saying all oh, the right frequencies work. It works. Wizard apparently seems to get, get results with that and other things. Who knows? I don't want to believe he was lying about the whole thing. I believe he was sick. I, I, I really, again, again, nothing would surprise me. I've been a low life scumbag at one point and I'd lie about anything at one point. So when people lie and they get caught with me, I'm not surprised. But I, I, I want to believe and give the benefit of the doubt as much as possible. He was sick. He's gotten results. Uh, so, you know, the woman Lee said, I'm going to send you one of these machines, uh, you know, and I'm going to try it out, you know, see what the energies and frequencies do, if anything. And then if nothing else, I get to have that experience and report on it. I might do certain videos related about that energy and frequencies and my trial and error, you know, and what the results are, if any. Um, but yeah, man, I'm so focused on me and, and doing and being whoever, whatever me is and, and, and kind of creating whatever's going to extend off of me in this life and healing my physical vessel that I have almost no extra time, energy, attention to focus on these people. And that's what drives them crazy, right? That's when they really start going crazy. You saw your boy showed up here yesterday, tried to kick it around, tried to act like it was all good. And then lost his mind, freaked out, said he's taking keys. How are you going to take back keys that I already knew you gave me and didn't care? Didn't even go over there. Didn't use them. This is how little power and influence they have. See the projection now? Remember what the first thing I told you was? You got to have continuity here when I'm speaking so fast. The first thing I told you was they're going to try to convince you you have no power and influence and no content. Either you believe that or you don't. The reason they're doing that is because they've already accepted they have little, if any, power, influence, and content. It's more a projection deception game. They have to get you to believe what they believe about themselves on some level is true about you to keep you where they are because they're already intrinsically, subconsciously, if not consciously aware, you're going to outcompete them. You're going to outpace them. You're going to be Brian O'Shea better than anyone else could. They can't be you if they want to, and likewise the other way around. But that's the secret, one of the secret and keys to success of life and running any business, right? Is understanding nobody could do it the way that you do it. And if you just focus on doing and being something above and beyond the rest, you will always have repeat folks who show up to do fellowship and to experience with you because they can't get that anywhere else. They can go everywhere else and get a jerk-off douchebag with the hat backwards and the earrings who tries to play it cool and make little quips, but really it mounts to nothing. There's no deep conversation. There's no real understanding. There's no goals. There's no purpose and meaning and values. You start to understand all that stuff and hit those things, you're guaranteed a certain place in any venue. And more importantly, here's the best part, you're guaranteed a place in whatever is in the hereafter. It would seem to me, I'm not talking some heavens with harps and whatever else. It would just seem to me, we didn't come here for no reason. And it's going to greatly influence where we go and what we do, not only in this life, but uh, after the fact, right? I mean, there's, there's a good, uh, there's a good bit of sentiment or sensibility there that life doesn't begin or end at uh, conception or incarnation. Right? There's something before, during, and after whatever this experience of life and death, which are, are are linked together. So, yeah, man, you know, I'm just saying that to keep you inspired, to keep you motivated, to keep you focused on yourself, and to keep you careful, right? That doesn't mean cautious. It means careful, full of care for who and what you are, what you do, and not give a fuck about the rest of these folks who are absent of care. They don't care about themselves and the truth in their own fucking life. That's evident. You watch Slow State and the rest of them chugging Pepsi, drinking alcohol on New Year's, acting like fucking fools and clowns and codependent addicts. The shit is fucking embarrassing. And no, I'm not telling you that I don't have that in me and haven't experienced it. It's only because I've been that most of my life that I can see it in others. I just want to be different now. That's all that is. Please don't hate me because I finally decided to be different and want to actually create something here and do and be and be thankful and grateful and peaceful and loving and caring and have blessings and grace in my life. I may not always embody that, but I may want that or know that's meant for me. So please don't be mad at me when I move into that. You're just not meant to co-create with me at this time the way you are. You could change that, whoever you are, wherever you are. I'm open to that as well. I hold no grudges. Right? But again, when you seek to move forward and resolve and motherfuckers have already reconciled that they're never going to resolve, they have to keep latching on to you. 
That's what makes success and these venues and co-creating so challenging at times. Go ask any successful person, music producer. I don't give a fuck. Go ask So Player, your black daddy. I'm just teasing you. But go ask him. Surrounded by fucking loser, failure, coward, broke ass haters who just keep latching to try to use you and suck off you and drain you of your energy and momentum so they could twist it and de alchemize it into something lower form consciousness. You don't want, you know, you could see it, Brian O'Shea. I know you can, bro. I know you've been part of whatever this is going on here. I know at times, too, you do the thing of, of uh, like, respecting me to so much high of regard that it may blow back on you and me but whatever at the end of the day as long as i'm not misleading myself and misleading you if i have something that you admire and you acquire it and you and i and everyone are better off for it then that's a good thing for me right that that's a positive testimony to undo shit that i may have done in the past uh in the negative sense right and that's all that we're here for man that's the true fellowship and, and reconciliation process is we've all done bad. We've all been less than, than what we could be. And we're here now to be better, do better and have better. And then reveal to others that that's possible. So don't let these motherfuckers get on you, bro. Cause I know, you know, I feel this shit at times. Yeah. Like snap who's like, Oh, and, you know, when your court case comes, you're going to fold. And it's just like, whatever i mean i guess i shouldn't care but it's just it's just you know just those layers of you know you got to use that you got to thank him for that this is the where you turn the corner and you thank the darkness and the demons for being who and what they are you say you say i would rather you not be like this but you're not going to change so all i could do is accept life on life's terms thank you for being a dark demonic example of what the fuck i'm not going to do and be and i'm going to use you for your energy the same way you want to use me for yours you just, the way they want to de-alchemize that light, you alchemize the darkness and the demonic behavior. It only seeks to empower you and inspire you if you let it be. Oh, you think I'm going to do this, this, and this? No, watch how I continue to do this, this, and this. And not for the reasons you think. This ain't about pride and ego. I got a different reason for why I do what I do, right? That's how you keep showing them. And you keep knocking them the fuck out with this idea of, I can't believe how much we show up and try to latch and detach uh, pe beings from their movement and detract from that. And this motherfucker just keeps showing up and putting it in everybody's face and doing and being and getting and having success is the best revenge. That's not revenge. That's level up. So in a way, like your boy 50 cent said, get rich or die trying. I need you to hate so I could use you for your energy. The same way you want to use me for my energy in this care that I have for myself and this movement and this truth. You want to try to take that and twist it and use it for your own personal gain and for your own profiteering motives. That's cool. But here's the here's the trick. At the end of all this shit, at some point, a motherfucker is going to have to put up or get shut up. That's just how life works. So keep yapping. Keep hating. Keep pretending and lying. At some point, you're going to get put on them scales of justice. and You're not going to like what you see and feel. And that's OK, too. Right. And no, I'm not wishing nothing on nobody. And no, I'm not trying to make nothing happen. I'm just aware of how karma works. So the more I focus on me and do what's true and what's right, and the more you keep hating, the more I keep leveling up, growing and succeeding, which makes you hate more. And then at some point, you're going to get what the fuck you've been giving out. And it ain't going to be a good day for you. I've seen it over and over again. You know, that's where we get tricked out of our faith, thinking we got to fight, argue, roll around with. You see me, bro, jump out the window. Right. Watching slow state and others try to pick on people they thought were weak. And I bust in there and go, hey, bro, do it with me. But then I got a, almost in the middle of it. Right. And then they try to punk me. Oh, Paulie boy challenged me to street beefs. And I went quiet for five minutes and then finally said I'd accept. I know I'm not going to set it up, but he backed out. Yeah, I immediately backed off because I said, you know what? You're not going to get me out of my faith, bro. I didn't come on here to roll around with people and to be butterbean and hit each other over the head for some kind of clout and a couple thousand bucks. That ain't me. I don't need that. If I was going to do that, then I'm going to put my all into that and do that and be that. That's not why I showed up here. So I'm not tricking myself out of my faith and position. Vengeance belongs to whatever, whoever that is. The thing that I've seen strike people dead for fucking with me. The thing that I've seen put people in a fucking hole and have all their pretty and nice shit taken for fucking with me. And it ain't about me as a personality. It's about what I come here to do and be and represent. You want to play with that? That thing's going to play back. I don't even have to do nothing. 
That's a different level of control over self that leads to empowerment and inspiration and faith where you don't have to become like the thing you're trying to say you don't want to be like that you're saying is not honorable and faithful. Right. So I leave that shit to them. I leave the fighting, the, 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 the rolling around, you know, the, the trying to harm other people and, and take them down. I leave that shit to them as much as possible. That's their game. My game is faith in doing what's true and what's right, surrendering the rest and watching how God moves. That's it. Yeah. It's like these people, you know, I tell them, oh, I got, uh, I got arrested recently. <laughs> oh, you failed. I mean, there could be some truth to that, you know. Um, they drag me into court. I get locked up. Like How is that day. failing, bro? No, no, no. That's where you win. That's where you, you this is the thing. They're going to tell you you're losing. Ha, ha, ha. Like me when they, 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 they posted a bunch of videos of me, the ones I posted and then laughed over them. I go, you guys only have the shit that I gave you. You think you're going to hurt me with it? I won the day that I went out the second, third and fourth time and traveled freely and kept getting arrested and let out. Every time I do it again and it happens again and I walk out, I win. I don't lose. I win back not only my dignity, my power to choose, and my ability to go past my fear. I won so big, the rest of the slaves don't even know it. They, they couldn't even understand what it's like to win all that shit back they've never experienced. Go past your fears, not be a coward, not do what the fuck you're told. Use God's will that's put into you and your conscience to make a choice. What? You must be crazy. No, motherfucker, I'm free. And you can't be truly free without love. And you can't be truly loving without freedom. Go sit with that one for a little bit. Come back to me and let me know what you come up with. All you weak ass, cowardly beta males who want to tell me you love your family. No, you don't. It's not possible for you to love your family if you don't love yourself and the truth and your land and the law of the land and your freedom and personal choice and love yourself on every level. You don't even know what that is, what that looks like and feels like. I do now, and I'm not giving it up for anybody or anything. That's integrity. You also can't be a true man and truly love if you don't have integrity, principles, values, and morals. And the majority, you don't have that. What you do is based on what the fuck they tell you to do in life. What you do is based on how you feel about shit in life. That's not a man. That's not even a woman. That's a bitch. That's a hoe. Yes, they are different. There's women, there's bitches, and there's hoes. You figure out the difference because I'm tired of talking about this shit here, to be honest with you. Most of right. this shit goes right over these motherfuckers' heads. They just don't know themselves and they're not willing to know themselves. They want to know the world and everything in it and what it has to offer them. Right, because we want to put like pass, fail on everything and it's like, okay, what if, you know, with that first interaction where I got arrested recently, what if I would have just gotten let go for some for some reason? I wouldn't have been able to experience the level of that came from that. So, in in like their those people's eyes, I'd be like, oh, it worked. Whatever the fuck they just did, he didn't have to give ID, and it worked. You know, but you know, just like uh, if I get dragged into court and they put me in jail, oh, he failed. But once again, it'll probably be another level up because I'm probably, hopefully. I don't even like that word hope, but like, you know, through faith, I won't do what the Castro did, which is a complete clown fucking idiot. So, right. But we walk by faith, not by sight. It wasn't Castro getting the 180 that made him a clown. It was everything in between. It's calling yourself a fucking scholar when you're the antithesis of that. It's selling trifolds and information when you can't create remedy and resolution, which is fraud. Okay. It's running around town like you got big bad balls and a big nut sack dragging your nuts across these cops' faces metaphorically. And when it's time to hit the fucking central booking and talk at court, you're whining and crying like a bitch. That's, there's no crying in baseball and there's no crying in activism, motherfucker. You want to cry? You cry on your fucking pillow and back. You don't get on the phone and whine and cry to the world. They got nothing to offer you at this point. This is a you journey. It's a you problem that requires a you solution. It ain't coming from the rest of us. The same thing applies to me. You think I do what the fuck I do ever expecting to even hear from the outside world again? We live in two different realms of dedication. That's just all it is. We live in two different realms of dedication and faith. 
Because I'm so dedicated and faithful, I scare me at times. I scare the ones closest to me. Not because of what I'm going to do to myself or them, but because of what I'm not going to do because you put fear onto me. They can't believe that my whole life hasn't been from day one run by fears of consequences. No, I'm not as afraid of what you're all going to do to me as I am afraid of the judgment I'm going to incur by listening to you devilish infidels because you're misleaders and deceivers. See, all this thing asked, like the scripture said, is you fear God equal or as much as you fear the rest of your peers and their consequences to you. I don't give a fuck. First of all, I don't have any peers in this realm if you ain't serving truth in God. You ain't my peers. So only motherfuckers who are serving truth in God can even talk to me or even pretend to make a judgment or discernment on me. The same thing I told the guy at Colorado court after I got him to establish there's two jurisdictions on record they preside over. That's a win for me and what I do because I got you on record and I proved what they said was sob sit mumbo jumbo is how the courts work. So after I proved that, I said to him, we can't do trial. Why not, Paulie boy? He said, what do you want to do? I said, we could go to trial, but we can't because what's your version of trial by jury? Well, it's a jury trial. What does that mean? Define it. Twelve of your peers are going to come in and make a decision on who and what you are and what you've done. I said, you can't find 12 of my peers on this state who serve God and the truth. It would take you the rest of the year. You're talking about bringing in 12 infidel citizen slaves who pay tax and don't understand rights or the law, and they're going to make legal determinations on whether I did it wrong or not with no valid claimant on the other side and no debt. Give me a break, administrator. You're honorable. We're done with this charade. I see right through it. Know what you're up to? You're trying to equalize with something you can equalize with because you're beneath it. You're only here in trust of it and to serve it. You're not here to equalize with it and overtake it. Who are you kidding? Closest thing to God in this room to you motherfuckers. Act like it. That's, that's how I present with them. Because that's what they, they want to fucking hear and see. It's what you all don't get. The court and the shatan and the dark forces are begging you to come out on record in the open and to proclaim who and what you are and your righteousness and divinity, and you don't fucking do it. So they love slaving you because you're a hoe. And pimping rules number 101 is when you meet a hoe, you pimp on them. You don't try to save them because it's who and what they are and it's what they want, so you give them what the fuck they want. You leave the rest of the ethics to the good men and women, the squares who want to play on the level. A broken bitch and a broken hoe who don't know how to do right, who won't do right, who will continue to suck dick for Shatan needs to be pimped on. It's what it is in their world. You don't have to like it to understand it. Yeah, if I get dragged into court and they uh, lock me up somehow, like people can be like, oh, you see, he failed. He doesn't know how to talk. This and this, which, you know, there could be levels to speaking in a courtroom, right? There's a, you could have a certain level where you, inter if you got drug in there and the way you would interact with them, there could be a level when I'm in there and I'm interacting with them. But if I, if I end up go getting in, put in a jail, incarcerated for a certain amount of time, I would like to think through faith that I'm only going to be getting stronger in there. Like whether it's physically, mentally, spiritually. That's the win. That's the win. It's not about what the other clowns judge you on record. It's knowing that you sit on the right side of history and God's judgment. It's that you know you sit on the right side of your own conscience and morals and conviction. That's the win. It's not about whether you killed or put in a box. The win is standing on your conviction and not wavering. That's how you get judged by the universe favorably. They think a win is being judged favorably by your fellow man. I don't give a fuck about that. They don't have the ability to judge me. A win is when I'm judged favorably by God, and that works locally through my conscience. I'm not trading my soul for anybody or anything, and that's what this thing wants from us. Am I telling you it's easy? No. Am I telling you it's not testing and challenging to I at times? It is. That's the whole point. There's nothing worth doing that you don't have to sacrifice for and deal with consequences. Everything else is bullshit. Yeah, like I already got a taste with the two, three days I was in there. Like I was already doing push-ups. I already had the phone, the electronics taken away, which could be a good thing. I was already 
preparing to write, uh, whether it's lyrics or comedy or whatever. I was already working one on one ministry type shit or fellowship with the other guys. You write to that administrator, man. You write to all these people and you let them know that they're in the presence of someone different than what they're used to. And they can say, paulie has got main character syndrome. I'd rather have main character syndrome than NPC syndrome. So you fucking let them know, man to man. Hey, listen, I got no beef with you and your system and your pimp game here. I think it's great. It's fascinating. I've learned a lot. This is who and what I am and what I'm not. And this is why I'm doing what I'm doing. Hopefully, faithfully, you'll understand that. Because I don't want to be in controversy. I don't want to be in chaos. I don't want to be in discontent with my fellow man and woman. It's common law, common parlance, common communication with common fucking sense in order to set your standing and status and position so they can't presume and assume you're a belligerent combative. So they can't presume and assume you don't know who and what you are. So you need to be governed by code of this world. So they can't presume and assume you're incompetent, incapable, dishonorable, bad faith. And lacking in, in, in understanding and presentment. So if I were you, uh, again, do I oftentimes take my own advice? No, I don't. Because I'm an egotistical motherfucker, like they've said many times. I believe what's true and what's right. And I believe if I have to fucking die or get my ass burnt over and over again, speaking that and being that, well, then that's the fucking price we got to pay. And oftentimes it works against me. So my advice to me would be the same as it is to you. Open a line of communication with all these people and try to get on the right side of their good sense and good nature, if possible, and settle in the private before you ever get to a public venue. So this way they can't heap a bunch of presumptions and assumptions on you that you're just another fucking bad faith, cowardly clown who wants to play both sides because they don't respect that. No one does. Yeah, when I showed up at the police station yesterday. And I'm going to have to get the uh, body cam if I want to get, because I, I got him on record with a lot of shit. And it's like, oh, how about my tent? If I put up the tent, he says, oh, out of sight, out of mind. Okay, what does that mean? Out of sight, out of mind. Like, basically, he's, you know, and I can push that. What do you mean? You're not going to fuck with me as long as you, you don't see me? He's like, well, yeah, those guys oh. seem pretty common sense able. They seem pretty uh, logical and reasonable. From what I've seen, the limited communications between you and them two. If they're really being how they are and not doing a game with you, which it doesn't really seem they are, they're pretty much saying as men, if you don't cause problems around here, we're not looking for no problems. Out of sight, out of mind, right? Don't be around here running around acting like a fool. Just do what the fuck you got to do. And we'll pretty much, you know, overlook whatever you got going on. They're, they're, they're really being as, as equitable as you're going to you're gonna get. I see this. Because, see, my first inclination is, again, I just go off what I was doing already. I was already on my way out of where I was. So when they stop me and whatever else, I let them know, bro, I'm not running. I'm on my way here to go stay there. This happened in between. I ain't coming back either. So part of me just goes, hey, Vegas is shit anyway. Just move on. You know, go to another state. But if you got a small town there and folks are equitable, and because ultimately, man, you can't run from this. And you can't live in a way where, hey, I'm on a new place, so they can't get me. You got to presume they can get you at any time, and you ain't doing any wrong, so you're willing to speak this truth wherever you got to speak it, whenever they're ready to come get you, you know, if they if they want that or need that, right? Um, But yeah, man, this is kind of like an opportunity for you in a way to now get the experience potentially, and I don't think anyone can ever tell the future completely. But this mesquite place is potentially an opportunity for you to actually prove what they just tried to disprove on the other spot. Because if these cops are equitable and they're being common sense able and they're not looking for problems with you, you might be able to travel freely around there and they're really not going to have an issue with it. Because they know like I know, ultimately a man is a man. If you're responsible and accountable and you're not breaching the peace, they're really not supposed to be involved in your life. You know? So that might still exist there. You might have a great opportunity. I don't know. It remains to be seen. But you're not going to get much of a better rapport than what you got with those two gentlemen, right? Uh, there's places I've gone where I've given them notice, and they tell me flat out, listen, jerk off, if we see you riding at all around here without everything we say you're supposed to have, we're going to slave you. And we're going to take it almost as an offense that we told you ahead of time and you didn't listen. 
So the fact that they're like, yeah, we'll wave to you. Yeah, we really don't care. Yeah, the tent, whatever, out of sight, out of mind. You got a potentially a golden opportunity here to work in trust and equity, you know? And, and yeah, the more you show up and don't annoy them, but you make yourself known and seen and they interact with you, the more you just become Brian O'Shea, right? And you're no longer this wacky sob shit who's up to something. Yeah, so yesterday, I guess it gave me the courage. You know, I put the tent up. It was in a little bit of sight, but I felt like it was safe. Just put it up at night, take it down in the morning, and it, you know, I got to got to sleep in the tent last night, which is fine under the the moon, under the moon and the stars, and like uh, pretty chill, pretty uh, low key situation. So yeah, uh, I feel good about that. Yo, I'd like to add. I'd like to add, Brian, you know, uh, a lot of the times in these situations, it seems like we're doing this thing where we're trying to like avoid a negative or like, uh, kind of like, kind of like fight this, the darkness. I'm speaking from personal experience, right? Um, and then a lot of times what the solution for me has been is like, let me just like move that to like push that to the side a bit and like not be in fear, not kind of focus on the shadow and be like, all right, what positivity am I going to bring here? Right. What are you offering brother? Right. Like, cause if you think about it this way, like, yeah, like, like Paul, Paul was just saying the like, yo, you're, you're kind of out of sight, out of mind, neutral. Yo, what if you take it another step further and you're like, now you're, and then you, you're doing it already. Right. But like, take it a, a step up a notch, take it a notch stepped up. I feel like Jack right now. Anyway, you get what I'm saying. Bring it up a notch and bring value, positive value, just straight up, like go direct. Right. Host a fucking comedy show on at your fucking tent or or or, or somewhere, right? Oh no, at be a rat Starbucks, like Polly right? Boy. Be a rat like Polly Boy and not try to create more enemies and hate. Like actually network with some of the men and women who are policy enforcement. Talk to them like human fucking beings. Show them that you're equitous. Right? You think I, I'm doing a I'm doing a bit non bit when I say show up with donuts and coffee. Why the fuck wouldn't you, bro? You want their ear? You want them to like give you respect and listen to you show up with some offerings the same way you would to a house party. You don't show up empty handed. Yeah. You say, who the fuck is this jerk off? You show up with something. They're willing to listen. They want to look at you a little bit. Hey, that's how life works, man. Sometimes you got to play the game. Is it really a game? If it's no game, if you start caring about motherfuckers, even folks who you see as enemies to you at times, you're going to get a different result in yourself and in life is what I've learned. So also- they will start to work for you. If you work yeah. with them and I don't mean like slow state will try to say rat and, and all the rest of that. I've never done that. I don't need to anything I do. I stand on. I do what I do waiting for the day that I go to go to jail to prove I'm not going to rat and fold. That's how I live. Right. That's just yeah. a different ethic. So not only do I not rat and snitch, but I also go the other line and live in good faith and honorability. I will work with police as men and women not to solve cases. Right. That's not what I'm here to do. Yo, I'm not paid hear- for that. And that's not my role. But the point is, is, um, you know, if you show up there and you let's say how many folks want to travel freely and talk rights and freedoms, but don't want to talk about service to their land and community. How many of you jerk off auditors spend your whole fucking day chasing cops around instead of talking to them like human beings and asking them, hey, bro, can I sweep up around the fucking station? Can I bring some fucking food to the homeless? Can I pick up trash on the side of the road? No, you wait to get locked up before they force you to do that type of shit. And there's our fucking problem. So you don't want to serve the community. You don't want to make people's lives better. But then you want to ask them for a paycheck to do and be that. Why don't you show them what the fuck that looks and feels like? Maybe they'll start to become what they're around and experience. What if we educate the cops on the calamity that's actually at hand so that they understand that one day, it's going to be them that's going to be facing the same tyranny. Right. And if we have some patriotic cops out there that are maybe waking up with the energy shift of the fucking eclipse, possibly with the shit that's going on all in the world, they might be a little receptive to it. And if you educate them a little bit before you come at them, we might get a little bit more traction. I said, you got to be a Mason to do that. You got to be Illuminati and Mason to to work with other men and women, regardless of their costume, to try to compel them to do and be better for what you say you want and need. I got to screen this person. Brian, can I hear from you? Can I see you? Yeah, it's me. Okay. 
Yeah, yeah man, that's the thing. You got to be what the fuck it is you want. So be the honorable, presentable community servant that you want to see them become. Maybe they'll take a cue from you. Just walk in and say, you will be assimilated. But not Greetings, like Simon. I know you emailed me worried about you drinking and whatever no. on here. I could do the psychological assessment if you want it. If not, I don't need to. Don't worry about it. Just move forward. I'm sure that this audience... Uh, and the God of creation will uh, forgive you for whatever you believe your transgressions are. I just want to apologize to everyone for my behavior. You have nothing they... to apologize for. I'm going to go ahead. Uh, rarely do I do this. Well, I oftentimes do this as a sort of a bit non bit. But in this case, a bit uh, more serious. I'm speaking for everyone here. You have nothing to apologize about. If you feel sorry for yourself or to your conscience about who and what you have done, then that's for you and your conscience to settle. You've not caused anyone here loss, injury, and harm, and you've not taken out a debt with anyone that you owe. So you've not done any wrong here. You may have been able to present yourself in a better fashion. That's for you to decide and for you to reform and repent on. That's not for us to judge you over. Okay, thanks. I didn't. Yeah, think we accept you, bro. Just, we just, like you. You know, I think most people here like you and accept you, and you can disagree and act out and do whatever you want. You still got a home here, if that makes sense. Yeah, I'm probably going to take a break from drinking because the only times I behave that unhinged is when I'm drinking. Yeah, but the reality of drinking is all it does is make the subconscious more readily accessible. So you're willing to say whatever's in you more freely. In a way, that's a positive thing. If you can open up your subconscious and let it all flow out and then look back at yourself, you can learn a lot about yourself and where you may be missing opportunities in yourself and in life to do and be and have better, right? So it can be a tool if you let it be. Yeah, true. But that's all I wanted to say. So peace out. Have a nice evening. All right, Thank Simon. Yo, alcohol in the Arabic means flesh eating spirit. It's like a black mirror, though. I get what you're saying. Yeah, I'm not telling everybody to do it. I'm saying if you're already doing it, then you can use it as a tool like anything else. Because no, one thing we know, which is cliche, is you get no truth like truth from a drunk, right? You know, there's different ways of saying it, but when somebody's drunk, they tend to come out with whatever the fuck's inside of them. Well, that's a great way to look at yourself and reverse engineer who and what you are and then change that potential. We have a society matrix that wants to make you give fucks, right? They, they have all these safety measures, all this bullshit, you know what I'm saying? And alcohol makes you give less fucks, so it breaks through a little bit of the psychological programming that you've been programmed that everything has to be fucking safe. Because back in the day, not everything was fucking safe. And just, you know what I mean? We're still here. I'm just saying. Go ahead, Timmy. You were saying something, Mr. O'Shea? I've been doing a lot of talking here. Nah, man. It's cool. It's cool. It's cool. I'm just, I'm just doing a face at, at this at, at rant just because if everybody keeps perpetuating that there's a society matrix and it's out to get us and it's all powerful, then, then – it's just a fucking uphill battle forever. And we'll always presume that everybody else is being a piece of shit. We'll always pre we'll be doing the same thing that they do to the real man and woman. They always presume that everybody's a slave that needs to be slaved up, needs to be governed. So if we do that back to them, it's always going to be a fucking fight. So Damn I man. have to lead and go and, and be the higher man, be the actual be Jimmy. the leader, be the man, and come with equity first it's, it's and not good. presume they're going to be pieces of garbage first right. and lead and educate. Jimmy. Otherwise, I can't be like, you guys are pieces of shit. Uh, I got to educate you. Like, it's the wrong energy, man. Educating. Look, you can't stand still on a moving train. Yo, at the end of the day, right, you got you the man. You stand still on a moving train. train by, by following it or you can resist it. You did, that's I'm your saying, problem. You you're resisting. You what you resist persists. You can't win by fighting a shadow, dude. You can't kill darkness. You can't genocide darkness. You can't do it. You can't get it done. You can't kill evil. Get it through your fucking head. You can't kill evil. Explain to me how that works. I'm just saying. Are you resisting me? Because if by your uh, I'm resisting your like I'm I'm calling out the idea that you people have that you can kill evil and fight evil you cannot all right i win then thank you also. 
uh, I don't know. It's your principles. But I, you resisted me, so I win. I mean, like, that's what you said, right? I'm calling out. It's a, it's a educational. Uh, well, it's not educational. Brand, it's you're playing games, approach, man. Yeah. He's not resisting what you're putting forth. He's transisting, right? Like in electrical components, there's resistor and transistor. He's transmuting the crap that you're putting forth in fear into a level of faith and resolution. What fear? He's not resisting what you're putting forth. He's what alchemizing it. All right. What am I fearing, though? You're saying there's an all-powerful, from his perspective, he's saying that your sentiment is there's an all-powerful B-system matrix here, and we have no influence, control, or power. He's saying subconsciously when you claim one, the other is true, and it's self-perpetuating and self-defeating and self-sabotaging. I wasn't talking about a, an all-powerful beast matrix. I was talking about a, a, a society matrix where people have this this safe mentality being programmed into them by all these safety, quote-unquote, safety measures. You know what I'm saying? In the world, you got stickers on fucking everything. Don't eat this. This this is this will kill you. You know what I mean? Like, all this extra over-over safety measures is to program the people. It's a mental construct matrix of... Of you have to be safe to make you to make you fear. That's what I was trying to just point out. I wasn't talking about the beast matrix. To lie to you. I got you. I got you. They, either way, though, I'm still making the, the general point just because uh, just because we were on the topic about like bringing equity to folks in the in their public capacity, talking to them as men in the private. I was just kind of going off that. I got you. Yeah, and he's pretty much saying that you got a whole twoof community full of folks who spend little time actually interacting with men and women in the world and creating influence and making change. They just spend their whole life describing the problem they see and how disempowering it is. I agree. Your thoughts, Christos? Well, nothing yet. Just wanted to come join the phone. Brian O'Shea, Frank? Yeah, mate, yeah, I was just referring, I wanted to refer back to uh, OTW and that panel there, bro. Um, do you, you really don't remember me, do you? I, I don't know what this thing is of not remembering you. Like, I, you know, unless folks appear here regularly over the course of time, I have, you know, varied was, memories of, of yeah. folks' interaction with me. But no, I don't remember the explicit details of every interaction that I have, because most of them tend to blend together. They're very similar in a lot of the same ways, right? They're just, they tend to be rooted in the same state of consciousness. And I'm ten tending to be rooted in the same state of consciousness. And I either adopt an offensive position or a neutral position, right? I'm either seeking to offend folks in their foolishness and cognitive dissonance, or I'm seeking a neutral position in order to uh, uh, potentially draw them out uh, of that right or to just remain uncombative you know with folks so again the state of consciousness of what is doesn't change the approach to how it's dealt with or how the content is created may change right and again you may argue a, a portion of that may con be contingent upon the state of beingness that i'm in at the time right what do i feel is important what do i feel is valuable what am i tired of hearing over and over again without the other conversations coming into play so, yeah, I mean, it's a bit of objectivity. It's a bit of subjectivity. That's fair enough. Yeah, oftentimes in what I do, I, I remember people off of the virtue of who and what they are and their character. That just comes natural. But I don't seek to remember people in order to be endeared to them. I find oftentimes in this work, it's better to not play favorites. Consciousness and awareness is conscious and awareness. People's names and the subjective details don't matter as much as what they're doing with their conscious and awareness and what they're not doing. And that's pretty much all of any practice from the beginning of time uh, that gets validity is about, right? Is observing ourselves and each other and getting to the root of who and what we are, why we're doing what we're doing, and where we could do better. That's kind of why I wake up in the morning at this point. Yo, addressing what you guys were talking about earlier, it's like, yo, the point of guerrilla war is not to succeed. It's always been to make the enemy bleed. You know what I'm saying? Depriving them of the peace of mind and they need bullets are hard to telegraph when they bob and they weave. Immortal technique. You know what I mean? He said it greatly.
You know what I mean? Like sometimes the pe what people think success is is not what you're trying to achieve in the first place. You know what I mean? You can keep saying you know what I mean, but I know what you mean, and, and I don't agree because some of us have a bigger purpose or resolution here than just revolution, which is just fighting for the sake of fighting. Well, I appreciate your, you know, breaking the silence. That's why I was saying that, you know what I mean? There was an awkward silence. comfortable with silence? No, I'm just, I'm verbally cueing to see where everyone's at on what I just said. I don't like to just say a hundred. Yeah, you just quoted a mortal technique who, I mean, what, like, what value and credence and credibility does that give? I'm mortal saying, technique is a rapper. He's not living any of his truth as far as I know. I'm not saying the lyrics specifically. Just another clown figurehead it. puppet. If you want to get down to it, I'm but living yeah. more of immortal techniques music than he is. If you would listen for a second, bro, what I'm trying to say is that immortal technique said something that can relate to the same thing. I heard what you said that he said, and I don't agree. Fighting for the sake of fighting. It doesn't get us anywhere. It's been happening from the beginning of time. There has to be some remedy and resolution outside of a good and evil right and wrong enemy and pursuer dynamic. There has to be some remedy and resolution in consciousness that allows you to do what's true and what's right and not remain at war within yourself and without. I feel like you're missing the point of what I'm trying to say. And you're just saying, you know what I mean? Like I'm not, you said the other day, Jesus Christ is King of Kings. So are you quoting him and being like him? Or are you quoting a mortal technique and being like him? We got to pick one here. If you're going to idol worship, pick one. I was trying to correlate a mortal technique, right? What he's saying there to what we're experiencing, what you're experiencing, and Brian. Right, Sadie. but I don't have enemies in this realm, and I'm not doing guerrilla warfare, so I don't know what you're speaking it's not, of. It's not actual blood and guns warfare, but you got to understand that when you when you stand in the truth, this is an act of warfare against the system. They see it as warfare when you stand in your rights, right? Uh, not necessarily. I mean, you, 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 you're, you're talking about the system as if it's some monolithic thing. It's a collection of men and women acting as something. And Not like all of them do the same things all the time. What happens, like you just said, when they identify you spiritually, when you know, you know what I mean? They know you're the enemy. Right, but you perceive that as a war. I perceive that as tests and challenges. You don't Put on record who and what we are. You don't see a spiritual war playing out in this earth, in this world? You could argue that it's a competition that looks like war because the consequence at times is being harmed to your life. But ultimately, this is a test and a challenge to get on record who and what we all are, which is supposedly God's people. How Where in that is there an actual war? Business is warfare. Commerce is warfare. Again, it's competition. It's levels of competition. But you don't necessarily have to see your competition as an enemy. They may be your greatest ally. What did Sun Tzu say? If you camp your enemy next to, if you camp your uh, encampment of your soldiers next to a weak enemy, your army will become weak. So by virtue of that, the strongest opponent or the strongest competition is your best ally. It keeps you sharp and on task. Let me ask you something. Was that written in the art of competition or the art of war? I understand that, but again, the man also said, in the art of war, this is the point. You're not understanding how to solve the war within yourself before you do war from without. There is no war physically going on right now outside of your home. That's not There's a war within you because you just can't do what's true and what's right without perceiving an enemy. You just can't do it because it's true and it's right. You need an enemy to do it. I'm not conflicted, bro. I'm trying to speak and like, being in that scripture that wrote the art of war said, if you see, if you seek to understand your enemy, you will cease to have an enemy. So that's proof of the concept I just laid out. The being also said you go to war physically when absolutely necessary because war is actually a failure. You you've now got to the point of killing and dying or attacking and be attacked in order to create remedy and resolution when a being in consciousness and faith doesn't need to do that. My point wasn't about actual warfare. I guess that's the best statement I can make here. That's that was my point. It wasn't actually about actual warfare. Right. You got a bunch of folks who want to talk about warfare who haven't gone to war and haven't resolved the war within themselves because the truth of the facts of the matter is you folks are too scared to go to war on a physical or metaphysical level. So why even talk about it? 
you're better off on all levels just sitting in the spiritual faith and serving the truth and God because you ain't built like that anyway. Let's just be real about it. If you folks were, you'd be getting arrested over and over again and telling them to get fucked in so many words. And you ain't. I mean, so yeah, there's yeah. no point in talking about war physically or metaphysically because motherfuckers mostly ain't built like that. What they are built for is fear. So fear the judgment of God as much as you fear the judgment of your fellow man and what they're going to do to your ass versus what's going to be done to your soul if you keep fucking complying. Look, yo, getting arrested is not a good thing. All right. I didn't say that. I told you, don't tell me about war if you're not willing to put your ass on the line over and over again. You'd know nothing about it. I mean, is that a direct statement to me or a general? I'm statement? saying it's a direct statement to whoever it applies to. If you're being honorable and honest with yourself, you'll know whether it's you or not. I don't have to tell you about you. You would know better about you than me, I would hope. I'm wondering if you want a response from me. That's all I'm saying. You know you're I mean? free to respond or not. It's like you're free to leave, free to stay. I'm just wondering, are we doing are we doing a dialogue here or a monologue here? I don't know. I, it's that's up to your interpretation, apparently. I like your monologues, bro. I get a lot of value. Thank you. I mean, like, Subscribe, like, share. I'm just saying. I could dialogue with you, bro. You know what I mean? At the end of the I'm day. I'm saying if you you tell me if it applies to you. Most people yeah. are not what the fuck they're talking on here, because if they were, they'd be doing different shit and have a different record to show. How do you So there's no point in I just told you if you it's like, OK, I'll give you an example. Third party. This is like hard for you. There's a guy who calls himself Zetetic Warrior. He's never been to war in the streets. He's never been to war with the courts. He's never even resolved the war within himself. How is he fit to call himself a warrior or even speak on it? He has I no agree. idea what it's like to go out every day and put your ass and life on the line. Come home, get up and do it again. He has no idea what that's like. I do in many venues. I agree. So look, I've never been to Iraq with the U.S. military, but I've been on the streets of New York banging with flags out my pocket every day for years. All right. So why can't we bring that that thug low life street energy to a proper venue for honorable and presentable purposes? Why that's can't everybody keep that same energy at the court and with the system? They can do it on the street with a bunch of clowns who ain't shooting at them. I've been but they can't do it with the brain. folks who have all the equipment and have the system. For God, I don't get it. I've been trying to apply my brain. You know, I've tried with my fists and it only got me so far. You know what I mean? And I learned my lesson. That's why I don't advocate for violence anymore. I was a violent person, but that's not really what I'm about anymore. If I have to, I, you know what I mean? At the end of the day. You corner a lion or whatever, you know what I mean? It turns back into a jungle animal. But that's not what I'm aiming to do. I aim no, that's not how that works, sir. You corner a rat and it lashes out and get violent. A lion walks around with its pride and its dignity and its integrity. And it does what the fuck it wants. All right, we can pick up. there's anybody up. else to try to stop it. I, so I why are you doing the ego thing again, comparing yourself to a lion when you motherfuckers don't live like that? It's more like a rat. When you're cornered, you lash out. Yo, my bad. I should have picked my language more carefully in the court of Unslavia. It was a figure of speech, and I did not know we were going to pick it apart. I retract it. That's the thing about the court of Unslavia, as you put right. it, is here we're accountable for our thoughts, emotions, like actions, and inactions, words, terms, and phraseology. We're exactly what differentiates us from the rest of the rat-like slaves. See, maybe some folks here want to be, if they're not already, that lion archetype of Judah that you speak about. I retract and what that I thing. see on these panels, it ain't it. I would like to replace that statement. You know what I'm saying? Instead of if you corner a lion, basically, basically, if I have to, I will. I'm not going to seek violence. That's a better statement. I'm using phrases and that they got me caught up in their spells. Saying I get that because the reality of it, bro, is you're just like me. You're a loving, caring person and you're not a violent man. At your core, you're probably a good man and you want to be good and do good. It's just that at times folks corner you and you lash out. We get animalistic, right? But a being a conscience and consciousness does not live that way for himself, first and foremost. It's not that he's not capable of it. He may be better than a lot of them at it. There's always someone better than you. That's where the pride goes before the fall, right? I agree. And if you can't accept when you're wrong, then you can't grow. 
let's continue the animal analogy anyway. I, I see the policy, all these public fools as a uh, hyenas. They're just like a bunch of hyenas, man. They ain't fucking lions. You kidding? They're only pack animals. These folks never stand alone. We gotta pull you over with fucking two cars and at least four of them if Cargo. they even whiff, you know, that you, that you're not a, a mouse, right? They operate like so. insects, right? They communicate with little antennas. They hide in little <laughs> shit, right? They're fucking insects. Yeah, yo, so, so, so for folks out there that uh, have uh, thoughts about me, when I get pissed off, I get pissed off because I see a lot of you guys as a, uh, you guys should be lions. Like, there's lions inside of you, but uh, you act like fucking little mouse, like little mice. So that's what I'm pissed off about. Uh, that, like, I see a lion in, inside of you all. And uh, that's what just annoys me every day. That a lot of you have sold your fucking soul for, for nothing. For, like, for nothing. Daddy's, right, bro, Daddy's it's little like black you watch these, You watch these bullshit specials on History Channel, wherever, where they talk about these outlaw motorcycle clubs and all these gangs yeah. and associations. I'm not talking about being that or even the rest of that behavior and activity because the ultimate idea behind that men of honor and those codes of honor and those outside of society groups is they live their whole life for the day they get arrested and have to go to court and say, I'm a pagan through and through. I'm a Mongol through and through, right? I'm this, that, and the third through and through. I'm not foregoing who and what I am and what my conviction tells me for your rules of these people in these outfits, right? So that's the only thing that makes those organizations integral and have any kind of honor and get any kind of respect from all the rest of the folks around them. Is they're willing to kill or die for what they believe in they're willing to go do prison time for what they believe in, and they're not willing to cry and whine and beg for forgiveness like Chile decastrated for doing what they believe is true and right. And and again, this is this is all that in the man's subconscious we seek to be as children. Some folks have never grown up. And I'll argue a lot of those motorcycle clubs psychologically, they've never grown up. Because again, they just want to buck authority where it's convenient for them so they can do their deviant activities. They're another group of folks who are not interested in doing what's objectively true and right, upholding the law of the land and natural rights, which would allow them to ride their bikes, fight and fuck, smoke their dope, and do whatever the fuck else they want to do if they would do what they need to do. Because they're men and women first and foremost. But I'm talking about an idea here. So we're combining the best of both worlds, right? We're back to the archetype of the Christed being. Essentially an outlaw when it comes to his fellow man, because he will not follow statute and policy and code, and he only lives his whole life for the day that they build him the cross and kill him. So he can look him in the face and tell him, I'm going into the next world, not forsaking my soul. That's all it comes down to is that one moment. The rest of it is, is, is extras. Yo, let me let you in on a little secret. All these clubs, gangs, whatever the fuck it is, guilds, secret society, they're all created by the same people. They're all created by the same secret societies. Because the knowledge and the same setup systems are all set up within them. In all of their setups and hierarchies, the way that they... Act, act the way that they deploy themselves. I'm not necessarily yeah. arguing that on the highest level. On the lowest level, there's still an idea of loyalty. There's still an idea of a code of honor. There's still an idea of brotherhood. There's still an idea of being unwavering in the way that you live and not conforming to the ways of the world. Of course. That's what gets you considered, as you say, to be an outlaw. See, and to be an outlaw of this world, you got to be under the law of God, which is free choice and judgment from God. Not choosing their from their code of the world and being judged by your fellow man. That's not how that works. We're back to Tupac thug life, right? It's all the same concept over and over again. We get to the crux and the root of it. What makes a man a man? And then we can argue over the ethics that that man holds, but it doesn't change a man's conviction and their, and their discipline and willingness to sacrifice for what they know to be true. I wonder to myself why it is so, why it is so easy for evil to organize and why what seems to be good people to me at their core, right? Tend to just argue and bicker and divide themselves further 
like perpetually. For some reason, it just cannot be organized. So far, because the same way the biker clubs are organized, even if we're willing to go to war together and fuck and fight and all the rest of it together and and cultivate that brotherhood, most folks don't got it in them for when the time comes to do the time to stand tall. And that's readily apparent, right? Like, like a lot of these organizations wind up getting undone because they're willing to take on anybody. You know, again, we're back to the story of the Christed being. The reason I'm sure that that being only was dealing with 12 people, one of them who sold them out, was because the reality of it is, is most folks ain't fit for this walk. Just like most folks ain't fit to be a Mongol or a pagan or hell's angel, whatever. They'll tell you they are. They'll put on the outfit. They'll act apart. The when it's time to do the 10 fucking years or life, they're going to go to selling everyone the fuck else out. I agree. That's the way it is. And the crazy thing is most of these organizations want big numbers, so they accept people that are kind of questionable that they themselves aren't even too sure of, even through strict vetting processes. Right. That's why the best club is no club, because like I say, the circle is so small, it's me and the spirit. You have to live that way. There might come a time where all of your supposed brothers forsake you to save their own ass. What are you going to do then? I agree. Right? Those so this is this is what all of these outlaw folks and all these worldly folks learn about true honor is it was never about the club. It was never about the patch. It was about who and what you are as individual man, first and foremost, and you come together to resonate and co-create on that, or it will divide you and take you down individually and collectively. Can't escape who and what we are and the thematics to this creation. Those closest to you have the easiest access to destroy you, including yourself. Right, but this is why typically, and I know a lot of folks are going to get mad at me for saying this, but I'm going to say it, and if you folks are part of these groups and these gangs, please talk to me about it and let me know. Usually folks who are the strongest and most courageous don't run in groups. It's usually folks who play big and bad and tough who need to group with them in order to substantiate their position and their walk. The Christ of being, once again, was not a group consciousness being. He's willing to die or go to a box with himself, by himself, for the truth. It doesn't require anyone else's participation. It's an individual walk with you and God. You want to know what it was for me? Because it wasn't the group. I was already, in my own right, a fucking force to be reckoned with that didn't need any backup or anything like it. I used to rep my last name. Like, honestly, people used to rep neighborhoods and shit. I used to just be out there repping my last name. I was the only Sicilian out there just fighting the Russians by myself doing it. But, yo, at the end of the day, the reason why I got ganged up, honestly, is because I honestly thought I was it was going to be like the movies. Like, I thought I was going to be able to make money and have, like, fucking power and be able to get, like, soldiers and shit, right? That's what I thought it was. You know what I mean? Now, I had a friend that was in the shit, and I was always with my boy, and I was basically going to have to hold him down. If he was in beef anyway, so I was like, yo, I might as well just fucking join this shit. I get to go and have more beef now. You know what I mean? And that actually ended up being like my my duty. That was my job. I handled the beef. I loved it. At the end of the day, not everybody joins for the same reason. But what I did find as the person who, for example, handled beef is that I'm handling a lot of beef for people who wouldn't even handle that beef themselves. And these people are cowards. And so a lot of people did join for that group. So I agree. Dead on the money. But that's like to give you a little bit of perspective. It's not always for that group strength. Some motherfuckers are just crazy as fuck. And they're just looking for the next extreme thing to do. You know what I mean? I would say, yo, because our, our natural, our natural environments, tribes, uh, areas, communities have become so fucked and so disintegrated and so either suburban or just straight up just shit neighborhoods when with the people are not, uh, you know, connected at all. The culture's divided, traditions divided, um, where it's like man needs meaning. Like we, we need some kind of meaning. And, and a lot of time that does come from our brotherhood. Um, and, you know, you don't get it from the bullshit corporate world, right? So it is an advantage to have an instant family when you don't really have 
like a family yeah. that you could fall back on because they've rejected you because you don't match their fucking template of what a person is or should be. Bro, how many times have we heard the fucking story from the some some military slave that gets on here and I fucking call them out immediately and go, dude, admit now that you you shouldn't have fucking been there. You shouldn't have went in mercenary, license to kill fucking random innocent people. And, and unless they fucking ad submit and, and admit that they were a dumbass immediately, like they're just they're out. And but the ones that do admit it every time they go, well, I was just a kid. I had nowhere to go and I was lost. I didn't have a papa or I had a military slave papa either way. But yeah, they're just broken, you know, break them down to rebuild them up. Same kind of, same fucking thing over and over. Sometimes it don't work. What do you mean? Sometimes they break you down, they rebuild you, and then you just keep building. It just keeps going. And then you, you essentially become like a monster that can't be controlled any longer. It's an issue. Yeah, and then it's got to be like uh, used for good somehow, right? And that's the, that's the tough part. That's, that's the idea, bro. That's the hardest yeah. part to me. Agreed. I think we broke the matrix somehow. It's broken. I documented it. I made a Your little. Your thoughts, Brian O'Shea, Christos. Yeah, I mean, I. I I dabbled in the, the street shit and you know in hindsight that's what one of these guys told us like when these cats these younger cats you know stole some guns from some cops and uh, did what they did you know allegedly it's all, it's all no it's all documented it's all out there like but I, allegedly yeah because I don't know exactly what they did it's a fictional story we're working on a character but like that's what one of the guys told me he's like like yeah you, that's when you fucked up when you let so and so in but see, I had my I had one foot in the world and one foot out, you know. So I'm trying to play, you know. I'm you know I'm trying to like essentially use the organization and not be 100 percent committed. And then, you know, like you said, we're letting people in, and it, it's you're not fully vetting them in. You're not you're not even fully committed yourself. And then when shit goes down, like you're saying, when the real when the sh when the shit hits the fan, they 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 fucking fold. And then, you know, that gets me into the, into the fucking mix. And I fucking see what I'm made of. I fold, but then I redeem myself, but then it's like kind of too late. You can never fold, Brian. Because once you fold, you just keep folding. That's it. Well, I mean, I definitely folded, but I definitely redeemed myself. I, mean, I don't give a fuck what you say. What do you but consider I folding? I'm not sure what you mean. Like, maybe you don't understand what folding is exactly. No, I made a mistake. You know, I, 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 I fucking was dishonorable on the record, but then later on, I came back and corrected the record to try to course correct the mistake as best I could, to be accountable, and like, so it was a whole fucked up situation. Of what was the folding exactly? I don't, want, I don't want to get into it. I mean, it's, it's already been talked about on. Project. I'm not familiar with the situation, but if you look, if you don't want to get into it, I understand, but I can't garner any credibility from you from that. You know what I mean? I'm not looking for credibility from you. Fair enough. <clears throat> so, but I understand that concept of through that experience of letting people, like, you know, getting numbers and not really. You know, like you said, like you're talking about vetting people and understanding what they are. Yeah, and it's like what Paul was saying, it is a, it's not, it's more than just whatever fucking swag we were repping. It's an individual journey for all of us. You know, I understand coming from a broken home and looking at these, you know, not having a father and looking at these other men in the street looking for like fatherly influences and a sort of family. You know, I understand all that. I went through all that shit. I only had a father. It was a weird situation. A what? devil. It was like the inverse of like not having a father. I only had a father. It's the fucking craziest shit. Yeah, we had guys in our group that were that had fathers and shit. 
I don't know. My mom might actually be an incarnate of the devil. She's born on June 6, 1966, okay? Just remember that. Yeah, so, I mean, I... I so I, un I understand this concept, but like I said, it's not so much about the flag you're repping. You know, because it's all an individual thing. That's this whole life. Is I mean, yeah, that's why I'm not really, I'm, I'm not trying to like promote my fucking animalistic past life as a criminal, but I'm just saying I was out there, right? Putting myself at risk all the time for no reason. I was willing to die every day. You know what I mean? Like when you're out there with colors on in New York, right? Anyone else that has a similar different color, you know what I mean? They might just try to kill you. And now a bitch motherfucker will put his colors in his pocket. You know what I mean? But I wouldn't put my colors in my pocket. I would never be, I would never dare to put my colors in a pocket unless the cops were looking for us. That would be acceptable for me. You know what I mean? Brian O'Shea, you want to watch the Right to Travel video? I'm pretty sure I've, I've played it here before, but the kid uh, eating the mango, I don't know if you remember that, but it's one of my uh, favorite videos when it comes to the free travel idea. Kid, kid eating the mango is not ringing up. Not I knew. No. Pineal doesn't Why leave you? the house. What's up with Pineal and always talking into the little microphone, bro? I think this guy Frank. Don't worry awesome. about it. OTWs. I might be crazy, but I noticed weird yeah, shit. Yeah, you're the guy from OTWs earlier today, right? Yeah, that's right. Yep. Yeah, Aussie. He's trying to say he was super tired over there, and here he is three hours later. Yeah, because it's morning, man. So it's, tired. it's morning here, bro. Oh, you're just waiting. He's got his crank on now. He's got his coffee. He's ready to go. No, no, I'm no. good. I'm good. Where are you from, bro? Australia. Australia, what part? I got friends in Australia. Very nice. My friends are straight bogans, dog. What's up? Bogans. Straight bogans. Oh, you Good want to them. watch the video you were saying? Yeah. Right to travel? I don't. The, the mango thing's not ringing a bell, but I'm down to watch it. Yeah, good. This is it. how your interaction should have went, Brian. Oh, Hello, what's the emergency? Oh, yeah. Do you have a driver's license? Um, no, I don't. I'm just traveling. I, I, I just learned the law actually recently that, um, that uh, if you're traveling, that you don't need a plate or your ID. It's only when you're participating in commerce that you need to drive. But um, here. Do you have any ID at all with you? Here. I, I don't understand that rule. I've never heard of it. Oh, I actually printed out because I was blown away. I was, I was shocked. I'm fascinated too. If I can see it, that'd be great. Well, it's because the DMV um, works with the government, I think, right. and they don't tell anyone because they're making a lot of money off of us. Okay, but the Constitution doesn't apply to you. Is that correct? Um, I don't answer any questions about that um, okay. without counsel, but um, I just printed out and I was blown away. My my uh, people I was talking to, they said, yeah, if you're just traveling from point A to point B, you don't need to pay for your tag or your DMV fees or any of that. Here, I have some more paperwork if you want. Yeah, look. I got to get these. You have a law that says you don't have to have a mirror right here? Um, I got this. Um, I got this household good in this condition, uh -huh. and um, I plan to get a mirror. I, I was actually just on the auto parts website uh -huh. talking to them. <laughs> actually, as you pull this over, uh -huh. um, but yeah, you can go through that. Take your time. Um, I have nowhere really to go right now, and I would love to. I would love to get your feedback on this because I, I'm I'm very um, interested too. So. Okay. 
Do you have a birthday? Um, I don't answer any questions. I just, I'm just traveling, sir. I'm just trying to go to where I need to go. But you can take your time. I'll turn off the car and put it in park. All right, I remember the mango, mango boy now. The film mode here. I, I'm just filming this too, just for my safety. Um, can I get your badge number and your uh, name too, just for the? Badge is nine four five. My name's right here. Cool. All right. What's in my rights? That's all I'm doing. Brian, did you have printouts? I hope we're free to go. No. <laughs> Do you see how the printouts disarm that cop? Your voice sounds so nervous. You're like, I'm hella nervous, bro. I can see that. I'm about to start crying. Well, at least we do have now, I'm not, I might be crazy, and I'm you might take me as I'm never, never going to ever be genuine. And then you're going to realize one day that I've been genuine the whole time. But here's the thing. I think if we had printouts, you got it. It would disarm the cops like this situation. At least we'd have something. We'll travel. <laughs> You know what I mean? I'm willing to work on some shit if we can figure out what we need on these. Can you keep filming? I'll make the fucking things. I'll give them to you. I'll never ask you for anything. You know what I mean? You need to film good though, bro. This is going on YouTube, guys. If anyone is watching this, I'm very scared. I'm like a little shaky. Oh, just cool. Not really shaky, but it's been. I've been harassed by. We haven't had this stuff my whole motorized life. yet. Yeah. Just tell them we're waiting to get it notarized. I'm just traveling. That's just to help him, those papers. <laughs> He's just waiting for people like us. I have a puppy on the back of my dress. <laughs> <laughs> but my bin was showing, so he'll probably let us go. because he's gonna That's leave. peeling a fucking mango. Good cover, right? Bro, how did these two guys giggling and about a puppy I getaway? I don't know how many papers like, I don't know. Like, it, ha it had to be to print out. You got You show it to him on the paper, because these guys ain't doing nothing special. These guys are fucking retarded. How did they even know they could do this? Yeah, it's the fact that you're retarded and genuine is the whole thing. <laughs> I'm just saying, how did they even know they could do it? He started learn. He tells them. He tells them everything. He's learning about it. He heard something. He believes in it. He's trying it out. I'm saying, if more people had an easier way to learn about it and printouts yeah i mean that's it's like this it's like this you know we are change website uh that has a bunch of them all together i've shown it here before but in a way the psychology is sound if you submit without submitting right if you say like he does hey you know i'm just another guy like you turns out we don't need any of this pretty crazy huh you want to take a look at this it's like you're not challenging their authority you're not challenging their masculinity. You're submitting without submitting, and you're making it his decision. His decision is going to be greatly influenced by what he's seeing there that he believes is credible. I feel so, you. My original idea was to give them a summons. You know what I mean? But you guys didn't like that. So well, it's not that I didn't like that. It's that are we doing the like bit on bit, or are you actually creating resolution or remedy? I really made it, and I edited it even, and I made you your own copy, and that was. No, just I got you. that. I got that, but that's the bit, non bit. The resolution and remedy is a different, a different I activity. If we if we work on that, I need a little input on your end because I don't know as much. I'm learning, you know what I mean. But I'm not going to be able to learn everything you know in fucking. When did I meet you? You know what I mean, like a couple months ago. You know what I mean. I can't learn everything you know in a few months, so I need a little input, and I could put it in the format. And we could start writing fucking spiritual summons. Whatever. We, you know, we could have the paperwork on the back. We could have the, the law, you know, so we could have, or whatever it is. We could have the law so we can compare it, show them what the statute is to educate the cops. It goes along with working with the cops, showing them that we're not just assholes. You know what I mean? We're, do, we're actually doing them a favor fighting for their freedom. Like, you got to flip it on them. Like I'm right. not you do that to... one at a time. You do what you do, and then you present them with the information and let them make their decision, and then you take it up with the courts. I think they're less resistant if if they understand that you're actually doing them a service, and you're not just being a belligerent like 
asshole just to piss them off. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I can't explain it. In my head, it works out. But, like, if we explain it, like, look, you've got a problem, too. This is for you, too. Just because you're wearing the badge doesn't mean that one day you will you won't be, you know? And you'll be subject to whatever's going on here. We're, we're trying to help you have the most freedom like you should. Yeah, have. Most people don't take an idea when it's your idea. It has to be their idea for them to take it. So right. you're educating them without educating them. You're like, hey, I came across this. Look at all this. If you're saying it's not real, then we'll have the conversation. Maybe I'll go home and, you know, you're giving them kind of he's giving him an opportunity to use his discretion to decide how credible uh, this etymology and this case law and the rulings are, uh, and you know, just the spirit of the law as far as pursuit of happiness and free travel. Um, you know, there's a wide berth there as far as what the choice is going to be, because obviously there's officer discretion. But I think that when you remove that that resistance and that challenge from it, makes it a lot more likely that they're going to see you and what you're doing favorably. Yep. So, yeah, bro, going forward, I mean, just let me know. We can fucking put together the thing. I'm not going to go pay to register this and all that stuff. All right, if I get booked, just like when it comes back, zoom in on it. Isn't it interesting? I oh, I hate the smell of tampons and garbage cans. What? I can't, I'm telling you. All right, roll down your window a little bit. You got it. It's broken. Roll it down. Did you read those? I didn't read the whole thing. I it's, can't read that fast. Isn't it interesting? I, I just, I'm learning the law and I'm just abiding by law. Okay. Um, I'm from Oregon and Washington originally. Okay. Have you ever been in Weed? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, my name's on there. All right. But um, I just. Can I call you, can I call you Joel? Yeah, of course. Okay. Um, I just learned about these laws recently and um, I plan to get plates mm -hmm. saying traveler for my vehicles I travel in and for the right. vehicle I have that I participate in commerce, I'll get a license plate for that. Okay. Um, but I have to also go get these notarized. Mm -hmm. I just learned about this law, like I just learned about it and I was blown away um, that I've been paying all my money to the DMV for no reason. Even you, you don't have to have a license plate when you're traveling to pick up your kid. But you're gonna have a sheriff pulling you over. You're gonna have a cop pulling you over to ask you. Right. You, you might get tased or a window blown out. But you know, if we don't stand up, well, because you don't give them your your you don't have any ID. Okay. But you don't have to give anyone ID if there's no. What kind of conversation have you and I had? A lovely conversation. I'm I'm enjoying your company. Okay. Do you do I appear to be ready to tase you? Or oh no 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 no! I'm just saying it could happen. <laughs> it could. You know, if you had too many Red Bulls this morning. Yes. I, I don't watch Red Bull. <laughs> I, I was talking to my son last night about Red Bull. I don't think I do. Yeah, I seen you, and I'm like, oh my god, here we go. Sure, we'll do. I can't let anyone know. Yeah, you and I disagree on which laws we all need to follow. But I have no reason. You want to grab those for me? I have mango hands. Um, I appreciate you. Mango? Yes, you want one? We just went to the fruit uh full full sale. I'm I'm trying to detox and go fruitarian. Right. I'm doing the vegan thing, the raw vegan. I appreciate you uh, sticking to your oath. And, you know, you were sworn into the oath. And I am too, you know, as living here as a yeah, being. So we have different views. Of course. That's all I can say. I, I'm not, you're not a bad person, obviously. You have a There's no victim lives. here. Right. We have different views. And you respect my view. I'll respect your view. You're on your way. I'm honored. I'm blessed right. to live in this country. I just got Thank back. From, I just got back from Southeast Asia. I'm so happy to be here. Yeah, well, um, I was looking to move out of the U.S., but once I'm there with the monarchy, I'm like, I need to get the hell out of here and get back to the U.S. <laughs> I still have some rights here, and it's very nice to have rights, you know? I'm planning on starting a thrift store here now, and, you know, hopefully it works out. What's that? Oh, we're going to go canvas this whole neighborhood and kind of just talk to people and, you know, talk about the thrift store I'm trying to start. And, and we buy people's door. junk sometimes and this and that, but huh? yeah, look for garage sales and stuff, yeah. you know? All right. Yeah. So if you get calls about a green Prius, you know it's me. Hey. <laughs> I love you, man. Take care. Wow, bro.
You saw it's Brian, Brian O'Shea and others. Christos, is that your brother? He handled that with uh, I can relate because Pineal and I are out here eating mangoes like that uh, casually at all different times. So, yeah, maybe he is related to us. No, I mean, I, I, I completely like that would be completely my style at this point with me being new to this as well. I mean, that guy's a little too hippie organy for me, but whatever. It is what it is. He had a loving energy. He had a peaceful energy. That's the main points to pick up. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I, can, that, I agree that, with what Rant was saying too. There, but go ahead. Maybe instead of a mango, you eat like a like a protein bar real slowly. I've got right. I've got one I've got one objective. I think I think he um I think he done one thing wrong, and that was uh, right at the end. He um he was too considerate towards the cop for pulling him over. Says the guy who gave us a bunch of crap this morning. I think he yeah, well, sure the cop acknowledged his rights. I, mean, I don't want to be combative with you, Frank. I mean, whatever. If you want to bring a different energy, I mean, you want to point something out, I, I don't want to discount it. No, no, no. I, I wasn't going to go through no questions again. I've, I've been put through them before. Simple as that. Yeah. I mean, what did you say he did? What What did he do at the end there? He was too thankful and grateful for the cop being part of probably the best interaction he's going to have all year. Yeah, I mean, he should have been more like righteously and dignant and angry. He shouldn't have been pulled over to start off with, Paul. We know that. We're deeply in fascism. So you can complain about what shouldn't have happened, or you can be thankful and grateful for what did happen. Sitting here being mad at the guy, bro, for being thankful at the end. Like, what's wrong with you, bro? Jesus warned people about people like you. He said, be careful of those who make good bad and bad good, Frank. Yeah, I would like to think I'm Mr. Gangster Southside O'Shea guy, but I'm probably more organy, mango-loving guy. You know, if the truth comes I down just to didn't it. agree with, uh, with, just with the end part there. I, I thought that, you know, you just be on your way. You know what I mean? Like, you've been let go. Just go. Talking to police, I can only hope I think, that 50 more people to are pulled is over be... and, and it goes that well so we can undo this by showing everyone what it's supposed to be. Yeah, after oh. all the good shit, Frank, could you have overlooked that, that one part? I mean, how well, many yeah, definitely. I mean, yeah, 100%. You have yeah. One thing that went right first, at least. I just thought I'd point it out and, and, and make it make, make it um, known, you know, like there's no problem with it's that. like you throwing shade, Frank. That's all it seemed like. I'm sorry. Uh, throw in shade. Do you know what that means in Australia? No. All right. So, it, for example, you were painting a false narrative. Okay. Very good. Well, if you believe so, I man, I can't hold that. I can't hold your thoughts. Something super positive into something negative immediately. Like doing some kind of black magic. I'm not saying everything he done there was was wrong, man. No way in hell. I think he I went all your steps was wrong in, the, in a piece that was utter amazing. I said um, the first thing I said was that was graceful. He handled yeah, it it's like a, like a small miracle. And rather than us realize that like God's working through these interactions, the right, the wrong. Well, let's find out all the places where it could have been better. I mean, it's just again, I'm not saying you're incorrect. It's just life on life's terms. We're at the point now where you're going to get pulled over for traveling freely. Just accept that. And if it turns out like this, then you should be nothing but thankful and grateful and understand you just created a resolution for the public to view. Right. That's that's a mini miracle. There's nowhere yeah. in there where we should be unthankful and ungrateful and lacking in faith. Yeah, no, you're right. Yeah, that's uh, spot on. I'll get you. I'm just, yeah, I'm just pointing out how subtle the ego can be, right? How subtle the pride <clears throat> and the desire and the wantonness can, you know, can get and be. And, and we're all subject to that, right? So it's precisely because he's not in that energy and that state of beingness that it probably went the way that it did. Paperwork aside, right? So oftentimes it seems subtly like this, this quantum physics aspects of this reality we're creating the reaction that we're going to get just by the way we're coming into it and what we're expecting versus just dealing with what is. It's like dogs. 
right? If you're scared at a dog, the dog's gonna bite you. It doesn't know why. It only it only knows that you're scared and it needs to attack you. But if you're friendly to a dog, it's not gonna bite you. They can sense. You remember you. the video me and Val does where I said, "Oh no, I'm not upset. I'm thankful and grateful. I'm welcoming this interaction. I knew that it was gonna happen. It needs to happen." Right, so it's like it's taking on your full duty and obligation as an American at this time to realize if you're going to be a change maker and create conversion, bearing witness and testimony, you're not only un not unthankful and grateful, you're honored to be doing this walk and this work and be able to show this information at this time to these folks. They need that, right? So, like in a way, when you're doing ministry, you're thankful and grateful the cop stops you because he needs this understanding more than anyone. Now more yeah, than ever. Most yeah. spend their yeah. life running from the demon. And you can run forever. Run the demon How does Jesus solution one way or another? How did no, no, Jesus I'll go you hundred percent? Yeah, I'm, I'm with you say. How did Jesus raise the dead? Was it some sort of thing where he put his hands over an actual dead body, or is it more like an interaction like this where the cops and other people are dead? And until they have an interaction like this, it's sort of enlivens them it awakens something in them a spirit in them. honestly i don't really know how it's to be interpreted right i can i interpret it both ways i think that when something's true it could be true in many different angles of perspective and it makes it more true what is said but at the same time right i'm not really one of the people that like cares about Jesus because of any of the miracles, like none of that really matters to what I believe. So like it's the resurrection, the blood sacrifice. That's not what I resonate with. What I resonate with about Jesus was that he was essentially radically in the truth. If you realize that and they killed him for it and he tried to bring that truth to humanity they didn't kill him for the truth and bringing the truth. They killed him for getting physical when he said he, we were not supposed to get physical. This is where then I'll, I'll like turn, not turn on the being, but I will point out that the being said, do not get physical. This is a metaphysical dynamic that has to be overcome and alchemized. And then he proceeded to get physical and violent with folks who were contracting uh, with this banking system in the church, right? So he let his emotions lead him to acting out. So while I'll say that the whole time that being is living, he's living potentially for the day when he's crucified, you don't want to expedite that process by getting out of character, right? I'm just saying, are you saying he was killed because he whipped uh, the bankers, the money lenders and flipped the tables? You could argue that, yeah. There's a good chance if that being went in there and took his own advice, like I've said about myself in the past, and he was ministering, bearing witness, and speaking the truth in a caring way and surrendering the rest, he might have been able to change the hearts of those folks in there. But because he went in there mirroring and, 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 and even um, out-competing those folks in that dark energy by bringing physical violence to that venue of contracting in souls, it only doubled down on his judgment. You ever snapped, bro? Have I ever snapped? Yeah. No. Again, I'm not here to make excuses and justifications on what I have or haven't done. I'm not doing it for that being either. I'm pointing out the logical and moral and ethical inconsistencies along with the inconsistencies of the word of the being that was spoke. The being said, I could raise an army and fight you guys. I choose not to. This is not a time for the sword. So, yes, have you ever snapped? Yes, we all have. That's the failing of the human condition, that we snap and act out, and then we get judged the same way, if not harsher, than the people we're claiming are morally unrighteous. That's why Jesus said he's son of man, bro. He was a man, right? And so, being a man, he snapped. Right. He just couldn't all take men are them. fallible, but that's the whole point of the story and the process, not to worship him like some perfected godhead, but to understand that there's a common theme and story that applies to all of us, and we are oftentimes our biggest undoing. Little did you know, you're more in line with what I believe than you even knew. I detest the worship of Jesus Christ, and I fight Trinitarians all day. I think it's idolatry, honestly. And it's the reason why Christianity hasn't brought change in the world, because most Christians are in idolatry, actually worshiping the Antichrist. That's what I believe.
You know what I mean? Sometimes it's hard to actually get to know people and what they believe when you're constantly in a in a digital combat sphere. You know what I mean? Yeah, and you know, and I bring up the raising of the dead in a metaphor. You latched onto it in a strange way. I agree with it. Yeah, but like I believe the way that you're interpreting it is true, and I believe it can also be true in the fact that he may have raised dead bodies. To, from the dead you know what i mean like i wouldn't put it past the possibility yeah but we're not talking about creating frankenstein here we're talking about metaphors people who are spiritually dead they, they're just clueless a lot of us can relate they're just being you know that's the quickening of the last three four years you know the, the awakening of the, the the walking dead like getting life back into you through understanding I tried to explain, like, I think Jesus did a lot of things that were not just applicable in one dimension. And that's what made it so different from other human actions or other spiritual being actions is that these things were multidimensional actions that could have only been taken with prior knowledge. You know what I mean? The whole layout of it. And that's excluding most of the mysticism around it. Just me. Can I see you and hear from you? It's me, Paul. It's Sophia. Okay. Are you just Amy in the other chat? No. No, no, no. Is my mic right. okay? Yeah. I sound like I'm getting some feedback. Yeah, no, it's decent. What do you got? Um, me? Okay. Yeah. So, <laughs> I was listening to you. Because I'm listening to you, and I just have one little bone to pick with you. I don't think they killed Jesus because he got angry. I think they killed Jesus because he made himself equal with God. He said that he and the Father were one. He made himself equal, and that made the religious leaders very angry. I don't know how you come to that interpretation. <clears throat> From my understanding, what happened to him happened directly after and as a result of him getting physical with the money changers. Well, they wanted to kill him all along because he was... I'm not claiming they didn't. Ma'am, ma'am, ma'am. I'm not claiming they don't want to kill me, DeCastro, and all the rest of us potentially or want to enslave us. The point is you don't give them the grounds to do it. It's the same theme over and over again. So, uh, you know, I'm not talking about what their inclination is and how they see him as a potential threat to their system. I'm saying if you know that and you know the answer is a non-physical one, why get angry and physical unless you were flawed and fallible and acted out? And that's exactly what the castrated has done. It's exactly what I've done in the past at times. And it's exactly what the Christed being did because we're all men and we're all fallible and we all have an ego and a pride and it has to be checked in these moments to get remedy and resolution. I've never really looked at it from that angle, uh, you know, knowing the whole story of Jesus and so on. So I appreciate, you know, that being brought to the attention. Yeah, it's the same way as if I talked here, you know, like Mr. Talcott, like we all do at times about being loving and caring and peaceful, also acknowledging the animalistic traits of the body. And then I'm going to sit here, talk about this understanding of self and encourage other folks to not be belligerent and combative, but be co-creative and bring resolution and remedy. And then I'm going to go off into the court and start whipping people and getting physical. What do you think they're going to do to me? It's probably going to be the last time you hear from me. Sometimes. If not, it's going to be a while before you hear from me again, if at all. Yeah, they accused him of being God and not justified well, killing him with it, but he never quit. Two people can't talk at once. Someone has to yield in that situation. I was just dropping you were saying so You were saying, Sophia? Well, there is such a thing as righteous indignation. I didn't say that there wasn't. When you take that to a physical realm and start acting on other people's physicality, you've missed the point of the message you're giving. 
I just think the the purpose of Christ had a higher being than what any of us can understand that we can. I don't know why you. I don't know. I don't know where that presumption comes from. That's very dogmatic, culty, like. It presumption comes from my life experience and what I know that God has done for me. It's been, I don't know how I don't know at all how what God has done for you translates to Jesus Christ, the supposed son, who's also a man who was sent by himself to be sacrificed back to himself for himself. I don't know what any of that has to do. I don't know where the connections come from that. I believe I do know it's from the cult and the dogma. I can't entertain that because you can't logically explain it. And even your that anecdotal accounts no, of God have even the anec even the anecdotal accounts of God from folks who do this can't fit Jesus into the equation. I agree that that Jesus is not God, the Father. And then right, are we here to serve God and, and uphold God's law, God's truth, or is it Jesus and Jesus' law and Jesus' truth? Is this is just you know Jesus is a messenger and a man, and he was obviously imperfect and fallible. If he wasn't, he wouldn't have said one thing and did something else and got himself killed. Yeah, there Jesus, was purpose my God. in his death. There was purpose. Again, there's purpose in everybody's life and death, you could argue, especially if they're living a full life and upholding God's law. The presumption is there wouldn't be purpose in my death if I was put to death or in prison for doing what was true and what's right. No, that's what makes his story relatable to all of us. There was mad purpose in Jesus' death. You know, his his story is what caused the majority of people to, you know what I mean, have the character that they have. Well, I appreciate you saying that. Who, who said that? That's me. Okay, well, I, who are you on the screen? Uh, I, I. Oh, I'm okay, up. I see you. So, I have to agree with that because I had to hit rock bottom. And when you hit rock bottom, the only place to go is up. And I didn't do it by myself. I did it with my faith. And I just happened to go through jesus christ not everybody does that and i respect that and i resonate with paul when he talks about that creational force for me it just happens to be through jesus christ and that's i know sophia job. we've been over this for over a year and a half you have a dogma and a cult that you adhere to not because you have any firsthand experience or reason because you have a feeling attached to an idea. You're wrong. Oh my I'm, not, I'm not wrong. You cannot explain to me. Out. I agree to all the statements you just made up until when I happen to get to faith through Jesus Christ. Okay. That's, that's the path that, that you took. But, but again, it's like saying, it's that. like saying I, I was at rock bottom, which many folks have said, Paul unslaved through his facilitation and his ministry helped me to get back to a strong faith. Does that make me the God of creation? No. Does that make me anything different, special, unique than any other being of conscience and awareness? No. Look at yeah. it this way, right? Yeah, there were so. beings before Christ, right? That were good and righteous in the eyes of God. I don't hate Jesus. Oh my God. All the Jesus freak uh, cult tards are now going to come out of the woodwork. I do the majority of what I do. I do the majority. Oh my God. They don't get it. I just, I can't even have the scent of you folks around here because the rest of them come in and start their projections. How are you going to tell someone, Grant, please? How are you going to tell someone, Grant, please? I don't need your help. What the fuck gave you the idea that I need your help in this life or on this broadcast? Okay. So, especially talking over me, man, that doesn't help me. That hinders me. I was trying to talk so with you. How, are you, how is someone going to tell me I hate Jesus when I'm more Christ-like than you have ever been if we want to do the comparative, egotistical, prideful game? That's you, truck body, cuck body outline. You don't care about truth and principles and values. You don't care about rights and freedoms. You don't care about God's law, universal law, and applying it and getting remedy and resolution. Why would you make a dumb claim and make yourself look like more of a fool saying, I hate Jesus, 
No, it's because I love the character of Jesus and the truth he stood for that I will not idol worship him. If you love me, you will do the same. More importantly, if you love yourself and the truth, you'll do the same. Because I don't believe that being was there to be idol worshipped as a god. There's nothing in the scripture that indicates that other than two cherry pick scriptures that I will guarantee every religious will spit out of their mouth. And I'm done with your crap. So if you want to continue to live the way you have, do it. I don't come to your house or your job and knock the french fries out of your hand. Please don't come here and try to alter what it is I do or my perspective because I didn't ask for it. And the majority of you folks are so predictable and in your foolishness that it's laughable that you would even come here and try to argue with me over the facts or the historicity. I find it to be a glaring emblematic example of the majority of folks' ignorance and arrogance in that ignorance. That somehow, some way, they have more answers and information than someone who's put their whole life into this, living it and looking at it. While you folks go to and from work, pay your slave tax, and listen to policy, statute, and code, and do fascism. It's beyond laughable. Greetings, cosmic person. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Uh, I, I'm blessed. I have to keep reminding myself of that. Mm -hmm. Thoughts? Um, My thoughts? Sophia? Yeah. Yeah, you can give your thoughts, but we I was kind of talking at Sophia. I was attempting to talk to her. It usually winds up talking at her. Yeah, go ahead, Sophia. I'm, it makes sense. Anyone else's thoughts? I don't know what just happened there. I just hey, don't hey, know hey, I'd like to. <laughs> Sophia, if you're talking, we can't hear you. I just don't even know which one is her or whatever. I was just trying to let her talk. Yeah, I want to add something. What up, everybody? Uh, I think the, the big disconnect is that when people read these books in in the regular old literacy of reading them, right, or just how they read, they go, they go, well, see? He said we're supposed to do this. And it's like, well, that's one way. That's a one perspective. Another perspective is him saying, do the same thing. Right? Talking about an I am consciousness, not saying I am. Guys, it's me over here. I'm the guy. I, me. He's referring to the I am consciousness. Right. You got I a guy who comes through here, says, this is how we live. Watch me. You can do it too. And they yeah. conclude from that we're supposed to worship the motherfucker. Right, right. I'm confused. Right. Yeah, I never stood on any of that, bro. Well, I stood on it for years. I grew up around that, but I started having more of an objective mindset as time went forward. And I do see it very saying. different now. So it's like if you mention the name Jesus, bro, you could put in a category with like a lot. And I understand that. You know what I mean? But like if you let me elaborate on things, you'll get a better understanding on where I'm at. I did a lot of studying myself, Paul. Again, I don't know why you doing this thing now at me where you're going to equalize with me on my broadcast as if I'm saying you haven't studied. I take preference here when it comes to speaking. If you want to speak all the things you know and your perspective, then go do a broadcast. Don't come to mind to do it, especially when it's talking while I'm talking. So you don't I'm, not, I'm, I'm totally uh, you're doing it now. I'm totally open to everyone sharing whatever it is they believe they have to offer. I'm just not going to do it from a competitive space. I'm not going to fight for airtime and direction on a broadcast I've created. It's ridiculous. You want to raise my hand or something? No, I just want you to stop being a douche. I'm not trying to be. I know. You're just that way. You got to work on it. I agree. I was More. interested in what they got to say. <laughs> it's, it's 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 so self bodice. It's so fear bot. You shall be assimilated. Let me get rid of the other two that aren't lit up. Then maybe it, it won't robot. Yeah, I just brought it in just to show this is the regular thing with her. Is the equipment is faulty? 
The understanding is faulty. It's a pattern of behavior, right? It's a thematic. You know, every time she comes in here, there's four iterations of her because her equipment is faulty. I mean, is it, is it, oh, is it coincidence that folks like thoughts, emotions, actions, and life are faulty and their equipment is faulty and their understanding is faulty? Is it a holographic coincidence is what I'm asking? Or is it more likely that we see overlay and connections in who and what we are and everything that extends off of us? I'm just asking questions. It's like the people you meet, they go, oh my God, I'm always in drama. Oh my God, you should have seen so many bad things happen to me. And I go, is it happening for you? And you think it's happening to you because you're calling in who and what you are? Just asking a question. I don't have that experience. So when other folks constantly have that experience, I have to contend or conclude it's a product of their beingness. So it probably carries over into everything they do and everything they are. And it has to be looked at. <laughs> I contend faith in truth is superior to faith in Jesus. Faith in Jesus will have you ignoring all the shit you need to correct because he's going to do it for you. Faith and truth will have you looking at yourself and leveling up and you won't have these fucking problems and issues anymore. That's my contention. Call it arrogant if you want. Okay, take over, please. I'm going to hit the reefer. Talk to Sophia about because this is, I love this bit. And I know, O'Shea, you can definitely do something with this. Please go somewhere with this. My experience has been different. <laughs> Sophia is um, legion. I'm There's more than one Sophia. That I can God or the conventional force, whatever you want to call it, is being talked about. And that to me is very important, especially the way the world is. Because if you're not connected to that, you don't have you don't have a hope for nothing. I can't understand you, Sophia. Get rid of the other two of you. I don't know why there's two of me there either. Like there's I said, my phone is not a good phone. I'm sorry. There's a trinity of you. There's three of you. Good girl. Your, and your, your robot. Let me go out and start coming out. It sounds you can good. make this shit up. I want to listen. I want to hear what that girl right has to say. You're the mother, the daughter, and the Holy Spirit. There's three of you. <laughs> good girl. May I ask so uh, Sophia a question? Sure. My my question is though, were you raised with Jesus like as a child? When I was a very young child, I had a knowing Sophia, of God. Do you care that I didn't it's have like any definition for it. I didn't have any names for it because I was a child. I just knew Sophia. that there was something with Sophia. me that was greater than me, but Sophia. was also within me. Sophia. Doesn't the Christ did being who you're worshiping incorrectly say you must become like a child again to get in the kingdom of heaven? That I, means, was. That means, I was. That means, I knew that God means, when I was a child. That means I'm stop kidding. naming it. That means stop with the egoic projection. Stop putting a name and a characterization on, on God, this God in quotes. But I'm it saying, who, it. your parents raised you with Jesus. I'm saying, like, who introduced Jesus to you, and at what age was this? That's my question, I guess. Did, is she gone now? I think there's two left, but I think the main one is gone, and the other two are non-vocal. Those are two non-vocal personalities. Can I answer for them? <laughs> yeah, you're really dying to talk, so go ahead. I just wanted to say one thing, yo. What if I could convince you, right, that the faith in the truth is the same thing as the faith in Jesus? I don't disagree with that to an extent. So I don't disagree with what you said either. Well, the faith in the truth, right, it can't supersede Jesus, though, because it is Jesus. I'm just saying that I don't think that if you're not believing in Jesus, that you're not able to carry the same frequency that's necessary for us to be our best selves as humans and overcome what, you know, the system is. Right. That's a frequency and an energy. That's not a personification. I don't think it needs to be Jesus or Buddha or anything actually specific. It's just more like a frequency of love and you can call it what you want. And I'm not saying that Jesus was not a real person and that his story wasn't great and that he can't help you be 
like that he's not an evolutionary pioneer and that we shouldn't strive to be Christ-like. But I'm just saying that I don't think if you're Muslim and you're an amazing person that you're not going to heaven and you're going to just go to hell. Like, I don't believe any of that is what I'm saying. I agree with you also. I yeah. think if someone's a good person by moral standards, they're actually a good person, right? And they yeah. live off in the desert and they never, they don't know about don't Jesus. Know about Jesus. Right. They do something else. They're just a good person though, right? I think they're still going to go to God. Right. right? Exactly. No, you can't have God without Jesus. There's another one down there in the chat. All the ones who hate the Lord. But well, you're yeah, the coward. Do. Doesn't the script? Thank you, Rent. You're the you're the coward who the scripture says the righteous are bold as a lion. The wicked flee when none pursue. So if you really were strong in your faith, you'd come up here and you'd testify to it. You won't because you're a coward and you don't even believe in the Jesus you claim to believe on. Who? I'm right Person here. in chat. Rant. Oh, I'm try sorry. to keep up. I know you're very like self centered oh, today. Oh, you're oh, very oh, about oh, you today oh, and what you want. You're right. You're right. I'm focused in the in the laser focus. I gotta I gotta diversify a little bit. You're in this thing of like I'm gonna criticize you, so you're like hyper aware, and then I wind up criticizing you. Just let go lightly, hold on tightly. That's you. You know, go go Calcott on it if you have to. <laughs> Bro, it's me. It's you. <laughs> Yo, uh, uh, just real quick, I wanted to say, uh, Cosmic, you look very pretty, and your hair looks very nice today. And if ain't nobody else gonna say something, I'm gonna say oh, something. I appreciate it. Yeah, the reason that uh, some of us are not gonna say that is because we're aware that her and many other women have this background with constantly being hit on by inauthentic corporate males. And if I'm gonna do that, I'm gonna do that at like my leisure when I feel it's appropriate. I'm not gonna do it to pad her false self ego. She's probably had too much of that. What about my amazing personality? No. Right. It's always like how hot she is because they're ready to bang her. Okay, we get that. And then where are we going to take that? That's going to be my question for yeah, every man who's going to... No, no, no. Every time she comes on here, I get this crap and I'm tired of it. Cosmic, I love your butthole eyes. It makes me smile. <laughs> Paul, in my defense, I, I, I didn't know any of that. You, so. or I'm hoping I misheard you. But. There is no defense, sir. I'm just saying, like, just, you know, again, I, I'm not acting like I'm not one of the horniest, most animalistic beings on the lowest level. It's just like set, setting, venue, read the room. There, nowhere in this conversation or there's energy does it really call for at this time us addressing her physical attractiveness. We're trying to talk about Jesus. Yeah. yeah. Jesus is way hotter than that. Yeah, I'm going to attempt to bang her later, but not now. You get what I'm saying? Read the room, bro. <laughs> Set and set it. You're gay. What do you mean? But you're gay, brother. <laughs> hey, hello, hello. I had to uh, restart my phone to get rid of all the extra. I don't know what was going on. and I didn't get to hear what the young lady said. Oh, Could yeah. she please repeat it? Jeez. Okay, let's see. I was basically just saying that, you know, if you had not been raised with Jesus, but we never got to really go over if that was, if you, it like, did your mother and father introduce Jesus to you as a baby or wherever? Like, that was my question. Well, I can answer that. And I appreciate that question. Yeah. Um, yes, my mother, she did believe in Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. She had a very difficult life. Mm -hmm. She, her first husband left her with a little baby, which was my sister. She met my father eight years later, and I was born. And through the volatileness, through the sometimes violent household that I grew up in, mm -hmm. the one thing that was consistent was that my mother talked to God, whether she used the name Jesus or not, because mm -hmm. sometimes she didn't. Mm -hmm. I just would hear her praying. I would hear her seeking guidance. Mm -hmm. I would see her trying very hard to make our family work. Mm -hmm. uh, I had good parents, but they were both so broken that there was a lot that happened all during my growing up years, as is the case for so many people. I don't right. Know the, the, the realization is that we come up in homes with broken people. Faith is something we probably need because it works for us, right? We've learned that. Uh, nowhere in there does that require us to carry over the broken qualities or lack thereof that we experienced in the home. That's right. So, That's like, I'm when we that. cling to this religion and don't observe ourselves, okay. it winds I'm up right. creating more of that self. Assuming that I'm clinging to a I have one more question for her as well. 
Absolutely, Ms. Cosmo. Sophia, I, I'm just pointing out a pattern I've seen with you in the past that you tend to be, you seem to be hyper emotional. I think she's hyper passionate about the I fact that she's out of her, her funk. You know, because that's a big thing. Like when people go through a lot of shit, when they're finally out of it, they're very happy and they want to share that with other Thank people. Thank you. That's what I think she's doing. I understand that. But Cosmic, uh, like we're not going to do the, you know, defend other women and defend other men thing. Like I, it's there's nothing here to be offended or defended it's with. I'm it's more than that. I actually do. I again, people. again, let's go back to square one because everyone has like this memory that doesn't seem to work as well as mine. And I'm the one smoking a ton of weed here. So I'm confused. She's the one who came up with a feeling and of needing to pick a bone with me about her faith mm -hmm. that she's done over and over again with me. Hey, Paul, so, oh, what's so cool about this? I respect your walk and your path and your journey and all that you've been through. But you I don't respect, respect the truth. I'm not looking. This is, oh my God. I appreciate that I get so much adulation and adoration all of a sudden when for decades no one was looking for me. I'm, I'm more interested in respect for the truth than I really am for me. I know that sounds crazy. You're not used to that. So it's not about you respecting me and my walk and your version of faith versus mine. It's about us getting to the truth if we're able to. You are the one that referenced it and tried to say that I was putting you down or something, and I'm not. I didn't say that. I, you're feeling that. That's you. You're feeling put down and inferior by my explanations of my walk in comparison to your faith. Well, and that's the whole thing. We all have to get through this somehow. And the way that I do it is my faith in God. I get Yeah, the way you do it is the same way most religionists do it. Radical ignorance. Radical ignorance. Can I ask Sophia my second question? Please. Sure, go ahead. My second question to you, Sophia, was was there a time when you were in your funk that you turned away from God or Jesus? Yes. Because, right? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am, I sure did. Yes. About a year ago, before I, um, when I first came to YouTube, I was, I was ready to off myself. And most people know that. And it was because I had lost my faith. I had lost my way. I basically told God, F you, I'm done with you. You're not helping me. I'm right. not getting better. I'm not getting resolved. I'm not happy. I'm not joyful. And when I decided to go back to God and get down on my knees and say, Lord, you've blessed me. You've helped me. And I haven't even seen it. And I'm sorry. Help me get back right again. Then I got joy back in my heart. And that's what I want from everybody. I see so much fighting on here and hateful things said to other people over differences when in, in reality like paul often says we are all just the same we're part of this thing we're all part of the one we don't need to hate each other and hurt each other right but you're you again I, I appreciate this but we're back to like he just said what you want and don't want what you expect and what is what is is from the beginning of time to the end of time evil is Okay, you know what? You continue to do the Luciferian toxic positivity swing where you overwrite creation and the simulation for your feelers. Can I ask one last question that might tie this all together and we may all get on the same page? It's all tied together. These folks can't conceive of reality where God has also created Shatan and tests and challenges all of us for the highest good. They just keep Bible. thinking we come here to stop evil. You don't. I've been, I've been you come here to stop Bible. being and living evil. And that's about discernment. My question the creator is anonymous. The question was going to be that, do you think it's possible that had you been born on the other side of the planet and, and your mother was Muslim and she prayed to, to God or Allah or whatever, and you turned away from him and you were in your funk and then you turned back to him that you could have had the literal like, same experience and really what that energy was, was just you pouring back into yourself and, and trying to love yourself and forgive yourself for whatever shit you did to yourself at one point. I will have to answer that with this comment. Mm -hmm. There is a light 
the light is from goodness, the light mm -hmm. is from God, and however people find that light, mm -hmm. whatever path helps them find that light is between them and God, and absolutely anyone of any background, faith, religion, atheist, whoever they are, whatever color they are, I don't care. If they call out to God, God is there because God right, is Right, but you God's wouldn't God. have called out to God if it wasn't from the darkness and the void. That's just true. like the, just I, like the I, universe, I, I, light I, only exists because there's a dark void for it to be cast into and onto. So you I can keep giving that. all the glory. I you can keep I had to go through hell. I had to go through the fiery pits of hell. All right, the tree of life's roots extend down to hell. Stop overriding one dynamic in favor of the other. It's going to keep you in resistance and in emotional swings. You Paul, have to I accept what that. is. Paul, I am fine. I am fine. And I Sophia, I, I'm just saying to you something I know about me that seems true for you is it's a great source of burden and suffering you to see the great source of burden and suffering for others. Let go of it. You can't oh, save them. I can't let go of it. I have turned it over to God. I have peace in my heart. I pray for other people with love. Not that, uh, that they'll do what I want them to do, but that they'll find God and that they'll find peace. That is I don't even I understand why you would pray for someone else to have a journey different than what God has meant them to have. I okay. still don't understand that. Just said, I feel like this is for them. It's what I want them to have. It right. So, guess what? <laughs> Evil and badness and suffering and death is meant for a lot of people. Accept that. I think she accepted when my sister died when I was 16 years old. I had to accept a lot of things. It sounds like she just wants to be, you know, um, an evangelist in a sense, and, and she doesn't mind putting herself out there. A lot of people don't want to talk about religion, it's taboo, they don't want to be judged. She's brave enough to come forward with her story. And I think she's just trying to share her love and light in the capacity that she's able and tell her story. And she's hoping that if someone's having a deep, dark thought about ending their life, that she can attest to what her story is and, and maybe help someone live another day. Like, that's what I get out of it. But I Thank don't you. Thank you, Miss Cosmic. That is exactly what all I'm trying to say. I'm not trying to force any religion. I am not a religious I'm person. Religious. I occasionally do t attend a church where my extended family is for the fellowship, not to listen to a man in a pulpit. I don't need that. I have that in my heart. Mm -hmm. I, I, I resonate and I feel like I understand you 100%. Thank you so very much. It's very nice to meet you. I don't think I've ever seen you on here before. Anytime. Sophia, what is the being safe part? Is that a triggering thing or is that something you're believe in excuse me ask that again please does being safe under your name is that a joke oh, or is that oh, no i'm being safe okay okay what some people don't know and some people do unfortunately i am being safe because there is a particular person in the universe that i do not wish to ever cross paths with again and Paul will know who I'm talking about because Paul handled it. Do you know what I'm talking about, Paul? I thought you were talking me. about me, but apparently it's not me. I'm talking Ever? about... Uh, uh, you, please. I'm not even going to say his name. Basically, Voldemort. you did an exorcism, Paul. Remember that? Yeah, the gouchy I'm, character. I'm trying to stay away from him. That's the only reason I'm hiding out. Again, you know, this is my point. Cosmic, you want to appeal to emotion and this false authority for what is. She wants to evangelize. Great. I'm not interested in what folks want. I'm interested in what is. And what is, is she's still in a fear-based reality. She's still hyper-emotional. She showed that here. And, and, and women still... I love these women who don't understand the, the, the purpose of a man in this, in this reality. Can I ask for them? It's like a complementary, objectively logical creature that does not appeal to emotion. Yet you want to resist that when it's exactly what you need in your life to go to the next level. Your emotions do not serve you. They detract from your life and what you create. That's obvious. Do you want to get... Do you, 
Okay. You're not interested in listening to me or like allowing me to lead. And this is why many of you women are alone or with beta males because you resist your solution in human form. I don't understand your side yet. And that's why I'm just trying to understand your side. Exactly. Um, yeah. I'm not interested. This is radical masculinity. That's going to be perceived as toxic. I'm not interested in what you or anyone else wants. Okay. I'm interested in what is and how that's created and how it's resolved. I have yeah, a question. You can't control your emotions, by the way, you can only control your feelings. Is Jesus Christ the truth? Hmm, he is for me. Then that's I can't weird. force that on anybody. Again, there's your feminine <laughs> ego. There is no for you and everyone else. There's the truth that we experience, and then there's a hallucination you want to cling to to cope. And there's a choice Jesus Christ, ways, the whether you want God or not. You women would do well with listening to anything I've said over the past year and a half and trying to practice some level of stoicism to balance out your toxic romanticism. I don't disagree. Stop romanticizing everything in this creation and, and attaching a feeling to it. It doesn't serve you. I Paul, though, just so that you're aware. I'm not speaking directly to anyone necessarily. If it applies to you and you know that, take it. If it doesn't, leave it. Okay. I'm, I'm speaking on a, a dynamic I've seen with every woman I've dealt with in this creation, and I'm not claiming they don't have a piece of the puzzle. There's a feminine um, uh, energy and motion or intuition that has to be observed and embodied as a man as well. That has nothing to do with energy and motion that's constantly misdirected to one's own detriment. And when I look at these women and ask them, Give me an account of your dating history and your career and all the rest of it. One thematic is clear. Their feelings regularly deceive them and mislead them. That's the purpose of having an objectively logical man or masculine aspect of yourself or in your life to help you to lead yourself where you need to go, not where you want to go or where your feelers convince you you want to be because it's not what's necessary. That's why Jesus Christ is described as a bridegroom. That's the point of husbandry. The word is husband for a reason. Like animal husbandry. You have to almost break a woman of her goofy appeal to her emotion and false authority so she can do what she needs to do to benefit not only her, but the collective. If a it's woman the same process a man has to go through to come of age. You know what it's built off of? rejection something most women are not familiar with if that's a, woman, a man's world rant give me a break man i'm trying to tell you something that's i important. know you're trying to tell me shit while i'm talking to them and trying to bring resolution you're chattering over my shoulder you don't know what i was gonna say are you saying that her and i have never been rejected because we're women though or am i misunderstanding I didn't necessarily say never. I say you folks are more apt to come up with a bunch of coping mechanisms and reasons that are not in line with the reason why it happened. A man is rejected and told why. Then he goes back maybe for years to correct himself, to get it right. If he does it at all, most men are not men. So you can't call everyone with a penis that. Mm -hmm. Women don't know that world. They just move on and go get someone or something else that they can have their way with. Well, or they need to not deal with it at all. And I want to know what love is. Right, that's called escapism. That doesn't work for you or anyone else either. The old, I don't need a man, I don't need criticism, I don't need discipline, and I don't need reformation and repentance. Bullshit. More feminine pride and ego. I don't want to be, I don't want to, um, what's the word? I don't want, I don't like the idea of being tamed. And I know to get a real man that that's what I, that I would have to submit. Right. You're back to wants again. No, you're right. I, there I, is no real woman out there who's out of her ego that doesn't want or need a man that can show her where humbleness and humility could benefit her as long as he's willing to hold himself to the same standard and not be hypocritical. Things from the exterior world that I would say personally affect my ability to do what you're saying, which I know I need to do, but. I'm not interested in the outer world. This all starts from within. This is about fear. This would have, it is about fear, but it also could affect like my actual life, like, like on a huge scale. 
that's the end. If you're going to, if we're going to start talking like day to day habits and bills and obligations and bullshit bills, I'm just saying like my rights were violated. So if I want to go be with a man who exercises his second amendment, I can land in jail for many years just for, just for being around that person, which sucks. Like maybe I'm interested in being with a guy who wa who wants to exercise that. I think it's sexy. I think He's, I like that. But then if I put myself there because they put this label on me and I get pulled over one day with him and he's got his shit in the glove box, which is perfectly fine for him because his rights weren't violated. Now I'm going to be. We're doing the what if game, the what if game three levels in. But I'm just saying then I lose 10 years of my life. So what do I do? That's the presumption. The presumption is that whatever you heard that someone used to keep you reined in, right? I the state of and their actors. You presume that that's the reality that's going to take place. I don't make those presumptions. Okay. There's no reason to presume that if somebody who you're with has a gun and it's lawful and you're in the area that you're going to go to prison for 10 years. I have no reason to believe that. I would do. And there's nothing stopping you from doing the proper paperwork and correcting the record and having that status changed to where that's no longer an issue it's on my list of things to do so it's on your list of things to do so how long is that list of things to do i'd love to get to that list cool. so I correct my thoughts correct my emotions correct my actions and inactions correct my status correct my dating history yeah that's on the long list that goes behind what you're going to do for a paycheck and in order first so that i can live my day-to-day -day life and not be dependent on any man and just be myself and be able to work and make a again living. your presumption is that by you getting enough fiat notes that you're not going to have to be interdependent with or on a man that's no. not how life works i'm saying it wouldn't be here today if that's how life worked i am a man of course no Paul, i mean the reality is Cosmic. yesterday that we need fiat coupons to live day to day i don't have a huge garden to live off of the, the land that i have whatever i gotta pay taxes which again, I get that that we need to get out. Is here. your boss a man? Is my boss a man? I don't have a boss right now, and it will be. Well, actually, I'll be an independent contractor when I finally pass my. Exam. The reality of this is that it's an inclusive statement for all of us. Here's where we do the we. We have a habit in our life of accepting less for ourselves and each other, and it causes us to have a less than desirable outcome and lifestyle, and it causes us to be unactualized and unrealized and unfulfilled. Make of that what you will. That's what I've noticed about me. If it applies to you, then it does. If it doesn't, then it doesn't. But again, the long list of things to do is usually by a procrastinating person who I know that about me. There's a long list of things that I have had to do or still have to do that I may not get to because I procrastinate. So by being real and understanding that about myself, maybe it'll mitigate uh, the negative effects of that, right? So again, it's not about excuses and justifications. We all know what we need to do and not do, and we all know that we're slacking or not. Sure. So then it just comes about what are we going to do next? How are we going to appropriate our time, energy, attention, and get a different result or not? And then we can't complain. Right. I agree with you. I got to thank a couple people here. Um, Joshua was doing his bit with the faces and the, and the, the, the whole thing. I'm, I'm okay with that. Rob G said for great message today without shaming, labeling, <laughs> listen, shaming and labeling. Uh, you know, I'm sorry if you don't want this the same way that I got it, you want it from me, but not the same way I got it. I had to shame and label myself to move forward. So if you want to characterizing me, calling myself a coward, a fat, lazy, procrastinating slave in order to like start to move towards some level of actualization and realization of the antithesis of that. I'm not going to accept that characterization. So if you don't like that, there's a good chance you need to look at that instead of trying to get me to stop doing that. You know, so I don't character, I don't call it shaming and labeling for calling it what it is in order to create something different than we experience that we don't like, or it's not beneficial to us. Jimmy Shively says, appreciate you and all you do, sir. Thank you, Mr. Shively. You're a blessing. Um, so yeah, Rob G again, we have this constant pattern where folks want to do all these shaming and labeling, right? As if like, there isn't <clears throat> any time and place for like some level of shaming or some level of labeling, like should folks not be shamed for being a bunch of genocidal freaks? Should yeah, folks yeah. not be shamed for creating their own and other slavery? Like, what are we saying here? 
You know, there's a reason why these words and sentiments exist, and there's probably a time and place for them. I don't just go around the metaverse picking on people, just cracking down people's door and saying, I'm going to shame you today and label you. I go, no, you come into my house, you say all this nonsense, I get to the root of your consciousness, and then I tell you, do you want to be better and do better and have better or be what you say you are, or do you want to keep living a lie? You want to call that shaming and labeling? Well, then that's all I'm about, 24-7, 365. When I'm not fucking, I guess. It's pretty much all I'm about. When I'm not at rest and I'm not fucking, that's what I'm about. Because I have to be, for me, right? That's what works for me. If it doesn't work for you, well, then don't be here and don't subject yourself to it. Go ahead. Paul, I'm sorry being mean to you lately. Don't be sorry. You've done nothing to be sorry for. Let all that bullshit go. I'm going to let it all out. Yeah, you've done nothing to be sorry for. You'll know it. If, if something comes up that I think you should be sorry for, you'll know it. Yeah. I'm sorry for you, but I'm not going to get into that discussion. I've already had a long day. You guys are cool. Yeah, like, Joshua, I'm sorry that, you know, you were born into a world full of, like, incompetent, incapable slaves who don't know how to manage their own affairs and constantly project onto others, including their children, and subject them to heinous conditions while making excuses and justifications. Like, I'm sorry for you, right? You don't need to be sorry to me. You haven't done anything to me. No. People have done things to you that hopefully by being here, you'll start to see as done for you so you can do better than them, right? And be yeah. better than them in life. Yeah. Have you well, taught them that? I, I have to, I have have to go. Class. I just wanted to thank you for letting me come up. And it was a pleasure to meet you, Miss Cosmic. Thanks, and, you know, the, the thing about it is I'm okay oh. within myself. Oh. And if people want to laugh oh. at me and make fun of me and feel better about themselves because they think I'm in the wrong or I have problems, they can do that. It doesn't bother me. And thank you so much. And I'm now, you're clear that I, I'm not doing that, right? And I'm not promoting that? No, you're not. But some of the people that like to chitter chatter in your chat box, they absolutely hate me. And I'm okay with that. Yeah, but that's I the thing. Somebody else. But, but the thing is, is we have to go beyond this. This is a projection deception, in my opinion. None of these folks hate you. You're, you're, you're they're, they're just, they're not willing to be kind and nice. They're not willing to be. They're not willing to be kind and nice because they believe that you're confused and they would be doing you a disservice. So they're being radically authentic and unkind and unnice with and what they see as the truth. And maybe that's they're, a lesson I need to Sophia, learn. Sophia, just let me finish. I know I've been cutting you off and, and it's not fair in a sense, but okay. what are you going to do, right? I'm an asshole. No, you're not. You've been great. So they don't hate you. If anything, this is their kind of twisted, jester, clown-like way of trying to help you. So That's if you good. don't see value in what they're saying, then just ignore it. I don't That's think good. anyone here has any actual hate for you. If anything, they care about you. They're just, it, it makes them uncomfortable to have to care about you and also be nice and kind and polite to you when they feel there's a truth you're missing. Then that is very authentic and genuine, and I will respect that. And I'll learn from it. Thank you. Yeah, it is, but it isn't because they probably could just speak directly to you and say, this is where we think you're missing the mark. This is where you could do better. They're not doing that. So it's like very authentic, inauthentic. That's okay. <laughs> and, and that's the thing, like I'm at a place of peace and I'm going to stay there. And then if the next thing comes up in life, as it does, I have more tools on my tool belt to fight it with and I'll get through it just like I've got through other things. You know, or just stop fighting, right? There is no part of this journey really that requires an active fight. Like, just let God be God and I'll do the best I can and let him help me when I can no longer do anything because there is a point in time that God has to take over and I've done all I can do. But we do have to do our part. I'm just going to say that. There are some people who think they don't have to do nothing and we do have to do our part, in my opinion. 
Yeah, I think that you would do well with dropping all of the some people and the we and the others and just focusing on you, what you can do and can't do, and then just exist as much as possible at peace. Right? Exactly. And I appreciate that. And I'm thankful every day. And believe it or not, like what Wizard used to say, I actually do love you guys. I actually do pray for all of the people that I've met on YouTube. And it matters to me. It matters to me what's going on in your lives when you have hardships and you have difficult times. Because there's a lot of fun and playing and games and jibbing and jabbing and back and forth and, you know, harassing each other out of fun or whatever. But at the end of the day, everybody's got to try to lay their head down with peace at night. And if they can't find that, I feel sorry for them. And I just hope it gets better. So, again, I'm talking too much. I'm going to step down because I do have to get back to my work. But thank you so much for letting me be a part. I appreciate it. All right, Sophia. God bless you. Take Appreciate care. you. Bye-bye. All right. So, yeah, I mean, the bottom line is, again, I go back to the Tao for these kind of times to illuminate an idea. Hope is as hollow as fear. It's the fear that puts you in a need to hope. Uh, and then it's the lack of your hope and desires being fulfilled that puts you back into fear. If you're in true faith, it doesn't require hope and fear is not part of the equation, right? It's like the fear is the prerequisite to drive you toward faith. With faith, hope and hopelessness don't matter. Because again, beyond the material world is the immaterial. What matters only matters in a material form. The immaterial metaphysical sense, none of it matters. So how do you, how do you reconcile that paradox, right? That's right. I fucking hate that lady. You probably hate yourself. Nah, it was a joke. We're talking about it. Come on. Tough crowd. Same thing. <laughs> Too soon. Hopefully she heard the second part if she was just tuning out. Yeah, I think that, that a lot of this comes out of this sort of mischievous streak comes out of the resentment that we develop from loving people who are overly emotional and draining. Like it's very difficult to love and have care for and invest in folks who are deluded and, and disempowered at times and, and are kind of hypersensitive and hyper emotional and require so much from others or the world, right? They're needy, you know? So I think that this is a lot of folks kind of, you know, innate reaction or response because they pick up on that energy of someone who's a bit too needy, a bit too codependent, a bit too desirous, and someone who's has the affect as if they're constantly in suffering. You know, it, it's it's a draining energy. It's not nourishing. It's not enriching. So yeah, there, I, there's I a caliber. I mean, when you see somebody on on a low caliber, kind of out of pocket, you're like, oh, what the fuck. Right, but this is where then it becomes kind of our opportunity to just remind these folks that they can let go, right? That their aspect of love doesn't require the neediness, the desire, the codependency, the entitlement, you know, the parasitic relationship to each other. Um, so, yeah, I think there's always an opportunity for us to help to restore that being if we can apply the proper remedy, right? rather than just kind of react to what that intuition represents. Because it's really just a threat system, a liability, right? Like this person feels yeah, like, no ah, stay at arm's length for me because you're going to wind up being a liability for me. And a lot of folks feel yep. comfortable in that shit, right? Other folks will react a different way. They'll pull that shit closer. Right, because they like thrive. They live in that space of like bonding over trauma, bonding over victimhood, you know, bonding over how there's so much evil and badness and hate in the world. It's like if we're gonna bond over that, bond over it in the sense of laughing at it along with your death, and then creating a resolution around it and surrendering the rest. We're gonna sit in this mire of I need you, I need me, we need God because we're going to use God to save us from ourselves in a world we don't understand or feel powerless. And it's just like, okay, enough, stop, get off me. 
Like, I'm good. I am that am. You know, like it says, be still and know that I am. I think there's a lot of folks that could, could use that mantra, right? And then they're going to find different results. The reason why Aaron Gauchi was attracted to you, Sophia, while you're running from him is precisely what I'm trying to illuminate to you. You have a prey-like energy and predators are going to be attracted to it because they perceive the same thing I do, that you have this duped, deluded, kind of self-suffering, chosen suffering, I'm a victim consciousness. And they're going to just gravitate toward you to fulfill that prophecy for you and with you. Yeah, I should do it. I do that to girls, but I stopped. Again, it's part of her putting faith in earthy man for whom there is no salvation. I just hope and wish that all these low lives and deviants will finally stop. Just let it go. You're putting faith in earthly men for whom there is no salvation. They can't even save themselves. Why are you pouring into that? You're calling out like a mating call to all the predators out there that go, Ugh, I can totally feed off of, uh, you know, Sophia's like duped out, deluded kindness and loving, caring heart. Ooh, you know, she's vulnerable. Ooh. And gouchy. <laughs> And nobody knows she's secretly a serial killer just waiting for them to come in. No, that'd be funny, though. No, that's Ooh, you. It turns me on <laughs> even more. That's you, Cosmic. All right. <laughs> yeah, a bit of projection there. <laughs> she's the Black Widow, this one, right? They all go, she's so cute, she's so hot. And she's like, I dare you to get near me because I'm going to break your soul. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, but, you know, let's not even get into that, okay? I have my own analysis of you. I don't want to get into it. Cosplay oh, mystery for me, bro. Wasn't she just thumping the Bible, bro, at the other one? I'd let her stab me any night. <laughs> oh my god! You guys have got crush. How do you get stabbed with a Bible? Where is Joshua from? Where is Joshua at in the world? Yeah, who is Where this kid? Is yeah. He's lucky to be here at 20 years old. I'm jealous. I had to wait way later in my life to get to this channel. I wish I had this channel when I was 20. This is the woman that Sophia got close to and then goes, I had to run far away. I go, Sophia, I told you for months and weeks that guy was a predator, a deceiver, and a Luciferian trash. And you just thought that I was like trying to take possession over you. That's what these goofy broads think. Like, I need them to listen to me. So I can get some ego rush. I'm like, no, I'm just trying to give you the move. It's good pimping. I'm trying to tell a goofy hoe how to stop getting caught up. Like, that's what I do. It's like, I love the game, right? I love the game more than I love you. That's what allows me to give you the game and not play favorites. So this is the guy, right? That she goes, I can't imagine. <laughs> like Talcott. I can't imagine he's a narcissistic deceiver, abuser, manipulator, user. Mm. Now yeah, there's the demon. Bring it up, <laughs> that guy. Who's the one possessed <laughs> by demons <laughs> again? Oh, yeah. Notice how many times I've man. done this. This is what they all see. Yeah, right. That's the <laughs> that's the guy that she thought was loving and caring, and wanted to help her like find God. Oh, <laughs> you guys wonder why Joel Osteen's making billions, right, off people like you? Did you exercise? He's in the back drinking blood and growling and fucking a child. And then he comes out on stage and tells you about the love of God. It's like fascinating. Yo, those fucking yells. Oh, man. So many songs. Yeah, the guy who has me thrown off panels because my tone is off. He goes, Paul, if we're not speaking in a tone of love, we're displeasing the yoni verse, right? And this is when you know you got a deviant on your hands. Like, like, like I would go to festivals and I just, no one will deal with me, right? Cause women, cause I go, Hey, I think you're attractive. I want to fuck you, but that's like three quarters of women. Where does this go? Let's see where this goes. Let's interact. And then they're like, Oh my God, Paulie's so narcissistic and abusive and toxic. And they go right over to some guy in a beret that looks like Christos who goes, I'm so love and light. I'm going to take you back to my tent and do a sorcery event with you and reveal the truth of Pachamama and the Yoni verse. And I go, he's just going to fuck you and give you herpes and leave. 
Like, could we just be real about what's going to happen here? Like, I'm not going to do that. I'm probably going to fuck you and then be stuck to you some way, somehow. Have to be your daddy, your guide, your guru, your therapist. Your, you know, we can go down the list because it's just how I am in life with people. This guy's going to fuck you. The sorcery is not going to work. He's probably going to put a demon in you and you're going to leave with herpes. And he's going to tell you the whole way. It's love and light. <laughs> and, and they'll go, I, I don't know. It just felt right with Tim out in the forest. It just felt right. His outfit, the accessories, the rap. And I'm like, okay, you're not meant to be with me anyway, then, if that's what you think. That's why I love it. I love the game because I go, these ones are not meant to be with me. They're not meant to be part of what I do because they can't see the move for what it is. Paul needs a man bun. That's it. I need the man bun. I need those little capri pants that are like puffy on the sides and only come up to your, like, you know. Little harem pants. Yeah. And then, like, the, you know, the, the, the Pirates of the Caribbean shirt so I can seem like mythical and mysterious and I can like play on how women are like subconsciously attracted to those dynamics and I can like drape myself in crystals and I can like study on Google what they are so I can tell it to you and mansplain to you about like the universe. Yeah, Yeah, just full full kook out, you know, it's a full kook out. Show your chest there. Yeah, like if you just go up to any one of these goofy broads and go, this is a magical healing organite stone and I'm going to shove it in your pussy because it's going to do healing for you, they'll all let you do it. If I just go, hey, I want to go in your pussy because I'm a man, they go, oh, toxic, narcissistic. I go, I don't, I thought that's them. You're saying it's me. Whatever. I wonder if that exists, Paul. You might have a, a market to go, uh, you may have to make a store. Healing crystal. Well, that's what that was going to be one of my tables at Unslavia Festival. Was I have organite sex toys that I shove into various women? Where you know they just line up, and I do like sound healing and crystal healing Say, through the water through water the root water. chakra. Right. Yes, of course. I have to tap your root chakra to do the healing of the rest of them all the way up. You understand? This is work I'm doing here. I don't get any pleasure out of this. Now lay down, spread them. Crystal dildos from Quartzite, Arizona. Right. Uh, you get it. Yes. And they're wrapped in copper wire, too, for extra conductivity. <laughs> I don't want you to think this is some kind of sham here. This is the real deal. This reminds me of the Bikram guy. See? Everyone has a story. She's got a story. See? They all have a story. Bikram guy. Well, no. I'm saying, do you know who the Bikram guy is? I, I just described him. Some guy in a goofy outfit who convinced you he was holier than thou and got himself away into your vagina and probably left you no better off than you were. Probably with some kind of big from herpes. I, I ditched on that. I got I almost went to his teacher training because I loved the series of his yoga, which was life changing, but then I started hearing he was a creep. So I didn't go to that one specifically. But I still love the yoga, but but yes, these guru people do take advantage of people, just like you said. I got a question. How was he a creep? Well, he was, ba I mean, allegedly, I know nothing about this man personally, uh, but, but, you know, many women came forward and just said that they were raped by him at his teacher trainings. And he was like, you know, put on a pedestal for years and years and years. He brought yoga to the Western world. Right, but you're also aware that women do this thing of they fuck someone and they don't get what they want, so then they say they were raped. You do know that exists, right? I'm not, I'm not saying it's impossible. I mean, I can't, you know, confirm or deny any of their allegations against him. It's not. Here's what I have like rejected. 15 men who say that I've raped them on the metaverse for precisely that dynamic, and I swear I've never fucked them. Yeah. They did the ritual. Then they realized they were tricked. Then they got raped. Okay, they were mind fucking raped. That's what really happened. No, they want to get fucked, and then they'll, you know, you'll reject them because they're a sloppy drunk or some shit, and then they'll say you're fucking, you know, rapist or gay. That's how it is. Toxic woman. I mean, that's kind of just a bit. KG speaking from experience. <laughs> Notice the gay was thrown in oh, there. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's you. That's you. No, 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 no that's you because you just said it. Yeah, you know, they'll do the no, thing I mean, like call you gay shit. and say you have a small penis and that you're broke and live in the street. You know, the usual uh, rap. Hey, hey, look at you, Paul. Christ-like, right? Get the fuck out well, of here. Well, listen, we're doing the bit non bit now. I go right from Christ-like beingness into comedic performer. That's the, the testament to my fluidity and dynamic oh, yeah, I, being. I had sex with Jennifer two years ago. Oh, oh here we go. 
It's not possible. Okay, she doesn't have sex in the street. Ooh. You can't afford a hotel. Oh, MG. You can't lose a pound in five days. I don't need to. Oh. I'm insanely attractive already. If I get in really good shape, you guys are done. You guys, there's going to oh. be none left for you for the rest of the beta males. Girls like a variety of different types of bodies, you know, also. Like, girls don't like just one type of guy. Right, I'm more to love. That's all that is. <laughs> yeah, luckily there's many types of girls on the planet. Yeah, and I'm Jimi Hendrix. Flow State likes guys that look like women. Oh. What? She said women like di uh, different kinds of guys. I said Flow State likes guys that look like women. Right. Yeah, the girls that will they'll try to diss you, they end up being security guards. Fuck them. <laughs> I mean, I've been burned by a lot of people, but I'm not going to judge it like general. I mean, I guess like, I'm being hypocrite. I do generalize. That's why I just don't deal with love at all, pretty much. I just don't deal with it. I had a girl talking about my penis, and she ends up having hairy nipples. Ain't that rich? Yeah, what's up with that? How dare she? <laughs> you're needed, JJ. I don't know what you're saying. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it, it didn't unmute. What's up with girls having hairy nipples? I mean, that's, you know, I got a hard, decent cock. I'm not hung like a black guy, but I mean, you got hairy nipples. What the fuck? I guess you should put in the request box that you don't like hairy nipples, and maybe she would have taken care of that for you. Well, I heard she's well, talking shit about me, and I'm telling everybody, women. I'm telling everybody, hey, <laughs> hey, she's got hairy nipples. She's talking about my dick, and I'm like, hey, she's got hairy nipples. And then everybody's like, oh, shit, hairy nipples. Yo, there's hairy nipples. You know, that's, hey, if you want drama, I got you. You're traumatized by her nipples? I'll be honest, yeah, it was fucking weird. Like, you, you want to suck on a nipple, and they come out, and there's hairs on them, and you're like, what the fuck? Like, that's where our shade just shines in. Your nipple cows. hairs are acting weird. <laughs> I don't know about men, but they're supposed to have hair on their nipples, but I don't like men who are hairy, so. Even even a cow's, you know, udders don't want to have fucking hair on them, you know? I'd rather suck on a, you get what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. No. <laughs> I'd rather suck a cow's udders, to be honest. Yeah. Put a hairy. Yeah. That's you. <laughs> have you ever seen the That's you. <laughs> Brian, that's you, man. Oh. Good for Brian, you. Nipples. I think everybody you got needs to owned. Sugar. You got punked out like a bitch. And you don't want to acknowledge it. You don't want to admit it. That's what. Right, right. All right. Nice, Brian. You're so cool, Brian. I don't think that was directed at you. I think that was directed That's at you. Nah, I'm just talking shit on Brian because he's scumbag, demented, defective fucking mental apes. That's what you guys are in the freedom movement. You're morons everywhere. You're morons. Why? Why even play that? It's not me. I don't even have the key. All right, I apologize, Brian. I'll be real here. I apologize. You think Josh is 25? This guy's so fat, he's just pressing buttons with his stomach. Bro, that was me, bro. What do you mean? So where's Brian? Where is everybody? What is everybody doing? I'm looking at your butthole eyes. Oh, my lord. Yeah, I like him. It's cute. Thanks, thanks. The shit you look at women and all you see is buttholes. It's a very, it's nice, very, nice, you, uh, very Freudian of you. Very Freudian of you. All right, yeah. Freud was. Uh, His mind is trying to make you into something attractive to him. It must be related somehow to his. Brother. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, look at Rand, man. Look at this guy. Freud is not a nice man. <laughs> I, Freud hated people. He ended up hating everyone. Like Freud, Freud, okay. I think Freud he's not a good man. 
were in front of him one time and he was traumatized and now he's like turned it into a fantasy or something. Freud went to Kaczynski on us. That's the Freud State. Did you guys watch the Freud movie? There was a movie that came out with, um, what's his name? The guy from Silence of the Lamb. Anthony Hopkins. Uh, Anthony Hopkins, great actor. Yes. Yeah, he's he was uh, he played Freud in the movie. It was pretty good. It's kind of a nerdy movie, but I liked it. I'd rather watch Silence of the Lambs. Mm -hmm. They should have had Talcott play it. My grandfather looks exactly like him. I mean, he's gone, but that's literally exactly what my uh, grandfather looked like. Just exactly. So weird. Clarice, I'm having a friend for dinner. <laughs> Pass the lotion. Freud wanted to fuck his mom. I think so. I think that's what his stuff was about. It was a very strange movie, indeed. His daughter was gay. I don't know. But they Lesbian. had a kind of weird relationship with the daughter and the father. They seemed kind of weird. You'd be gay, too, if your dad was Freud. I think I am kind of gay, but I'm not sure. Well, tell us about that. <laughs> I mean, but I blame it on things I was exposed to in my child, not childhood, but like my younger years. Yeah, I'm the same way. So. Women can't actually be gay. <laughs> no shit, Brian. I'm sorry to tell you this. Why can't they be gay? I don't get it. Women can't actually be gay. They can't really have intercourse that results Brian was raped by his uncle and it completely twisted his world up. He was 28. It was in his youth. Like, <laughs> girls like girls, but it's not gay in that sense because there's no intercourse. Oh, I see. Paul's mom's babysitter got him. Right. Oh my God. I told you not to bring that up, JD. <laughs> told you never to bring up again. That was just between you and I and the panel. Hey, Paul, how you been? Your mom's feeling a lot better. Oh, look <laughs> at you. You're looking so good. Yeah, how he got me was he told me I looked thin one day. And I go, oh, you don't say. I didn't know you cared. Next thing you know, he's got a finger in me. He's a real smooth talker, this guy. This gay Puerto Rican babysitter. I hope he wore a finger condom. Well, that would have taken all the pleasure away from me. <laughs> I like it, bro. JG knows. <laughs> That's you. <laughs> That's you. <Yeah. laughs> You're really wearing out that that's you, aren't you? It's getting real I mean, worn out of it. Hey, man. Hey, man. You push it on me. That's you. Well, you're going to start bringing up me getting fucked by gay Puerto Rican men. Obviously, that's what you're thinking about. You got Did that he fuck you? Huh? I, I mean, listen, you never know is what I said. I said I, I have no memory of that, but it's it's not out of the realm of possibility. Oh, man. God bless your soul. What's the movie called? Oh, God, I'd have to look it up. Let me see. The rules of that's you is if you use it, it could be used against you. Yeah. It's the rules. So, like, the where are we two, going with this, uh, lady well, and gentleman? I, I'm I, using that. On, uh, I came in when I saw the mango guy or whatever. That was that was good. That gave me hope. I, so, I, you I, like, instead of you saying you come here because daddy's here and I got, like, all the right lingo and energy you just fucking put it off on that queer with the mangoes that's not you know i came to watch your show obviously or i wouldn't be here all right tell me you love me i need i need i need love he needs an ego i thought we were supposed to be beyond ego paul oh that's see i can't even see did you see how this is joshua you see how they are to me I love they're always saying i need love and i need hugs and when I ask for it, it's not there. Right. Then the only one who's left is Rant to hug me and tell me he loves me. It's There's funny. my life. Roy's last right. okay, I love That's it. my life, brothers and sisters. That's it right there. That's I'm the feeling device. complete. <laughs> I'm feeling complete. <laughs> Are we gonna observe Talcott and his insanity or what? I gotta get I I don't know. Are we gonna I gotta ask her if we're gonna look for land? I got Talcott. There's no land around here. We gotta ride like an hour and a half. It might if be too late for Hey, Paul, bidforassets.org or .gov. I don't know what that means. .gov. That means you can find cheap land on there. If you want okay. it. Never been in it. 
Grant, what are you mumbling again, bro? You're oh, mumbling over and under everyone. And from yesterday, never been aired. I've got it on deck. If you want it, you can have it. I can load it up. Uh, I got Talcott right now if we're going to observe him. Bro, it's amazing. I found a correlation between Talcott and another channel that deals with window panels. When I was searching for hinged panels, because every Jack Talcott panel is unhinged. And if you saw this, this panel verse matrix breaking, I think you'd appreciate the artistry in the clip. It's like 10 minutes. It's mostly you talking and Talcott. I'm just saying. That's the pitch. Sounds creative. Watch, 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 watch. All right, yeah, give me a final word. I'm going to sign off here because I'm going to go look at some land. All right, Paul, you're awesome, man. You guys are cool. All right, JG. I really like you guys. All right, all right. Bye-bye. All right, JG, Bye. everybody. Amazing man. I'm going to get out yeah, of here. Right. Goodbye, Paul. You guys are cool. All right, we'll see you later, Cosmo. See you later. All right. I'll, you got. You're cool. Yeah. All right. I'm not leaving. All right. Take care, everyone. It's a great show today. Great broadcast. You're cool, Brian. You're cool, man. You're pretty cool too, dude. All right. I'll see you guys later. All right. All right cool, right. man. All right. Bye. Hello? Yeah. Yeah, this is where that's you. This is where you go. Final words. Yeah. yeah. Oh, <clears throat> well, I mean, <clears throat> some people, you know what I mean? You got to evaluate, bro. You could throw away the gold and keep the shit. You know what I mean? Vice versa. Life is about discernment. Do you agree? That's you. <laughs> are, you, are you asking me something? No, it was just that's you. I don't know. It felt it felt fitting. I got my final words. Here we go. All right. Uh, you can't control your emotions. You can only deal with your feelings. So I mean, always remember that. Got to tame yourself. Like Paul coming at me earlier. Perfect example. He couldn't tame himself, you know. He is constantly in his feelers. You don't hear him? <laughs> he gets going on his fucking rants. It's this feminine, well, bitch, feminine bitch energy coming uh, out of him. Strong. Mm -hmm. And that's how they justify. That's how they justify. All right, Rant, why are you still here? Did you get final words or what? Oh. Did you get final words and hang out? You just hang around. I thought that's what we were doing. No, oh, there's no what we're doing. It's final words and then you go. Oh, okay. Isn't a hangout? That's that slow state. That's slave right, cut. That's them. That's not me. All right. How about that? Fuck you guys. All right. There you go. Yeah, but this is this is flow state to us. That guy blocked me. I fucked that guy too. He's a fucking kook. This is all I got now, man. All right, JG. I'll see you later. Uh, final words, Joshua, Frank. I'll catch you on the next one, Paul. Thank you, Frank. No worries, man. Peace out. We'll see you next time. Yeah. Leave this guy, Josh. He he comes out with the whole thing that I knew all along. That to them, I'm I'm their flow state, right? And that's exactly what I'm trying to avoid, right? It's like I I am, but I'm not, right? I'm I'm actually not. Why well, you don't up a panel to these deviants? They just use me and use the panel. Sit around and yap. Kind of hang out for him. All right, Joshua, get out of here, man. I appreciate you. We love you. Audience loves you. I love you. We all love you. You're an amazing kid. All right. Signing off. Joshua signing off. All right, folks, I'm out of here.
Uh, Miles will come out west. I'll be back tomorrow, somewhere between 12 and 3 MDT. You know the thing. You know the deal. Uh, not much more can be said. I'm going to leave us off. Today's outro is going to be a little bit different than usual, right? It's still a cult classic, you might argue. So, yeah. I'm out of here. Bye. You know how this goes. And I think that's all of what we're doing in all ways. When we have the back and forth. Heavy. Please call the number on your screen and join the Paul Enslaved SPLS with a monthly gift right now. They're part of the process. I'd like to sing a song. Meeting in the middle of the desert always made me nervous. It's a scary place. I know about the whole oh desert, of course, and everywhere I looked, there could have been a hole. Normally, my prospects of coming back alive from a meeting are oh, 99 out of 100. At this time, when I heard him say a couple of hundred yards down the road, I gave myself 50-50. You get off talking to people about me behind my back going over my head. <laughs> what people? What people would you think I wasn't going to find out? I don't even know what you're talking about. No? You said I'm bringing heat on you? <laughs> I got to listen to people because of your fucking shit? You're ordering me out? You better get your own fucking army, pal. I didn't do anything. I mean, I didn't order you or anybody. I only told Rob Cleveland you got a lot of heat on you. Not <laughs> a problem. You want me to get out of my own fucking town? Yeah, I said, let, let the bullshit <laughs> blow over for a while so I can run the broadcast. Anything goes wrong with the broadcast. Well, it's my ass. It's not yours. It's my ass. Uh, I don't know whether you notice or not, but you only have your fucking broadcast because I made that possible. <laughs> I'm what counts out here. Now, yo, fucking fireplace or your fucking chats with jack and what the fuck are you doing <laughs> on live panels you know i get calls from back home every fucking day they think you went bad shit I'm only on panels because i gotta be able to hang around broadcast you understand that you know fucking that. ass you could have had to live without fear without going on live <laughs> panels you wanted to go on panels i did want to go on panels i would have a form i can fight back i'm known people see me they know they can't fuck around me like they could if I was an unknown. That's right. You're making yeah. a big fucking spectacle of yourself. Me? I wouldn't even be in this situation if it wasn't for you. You brought down so much fucking heat on me. And every time <laughs> I meet somebody here, the big question is, do I know you? Oh, sure. And now you I want to bring your fucking reputation on me. No, no, no. <laughs> when you asked me if you could come out here, what did I tell you? I mean, you asked me, and I knew you were going to come out no matter what. I said, but what did I tell you? Do you remember what I told you? Hey, back do you up, remember back what up I up told you? Minute here. One minute. I asked you, when the fuck did I ever ask you if I could come out here? Get this through your head, you. you. Never... Get this through your head, you guru. Motherfucker, you. You only exist out here because of me. That's the only reason. Without me, you personally, every fucking wise guy still around, I'll take a piece of your fucking guru ass. Get where you're going to go. You're fucking warned. Don't ever go over my fucking head again, you motherfucker, you. To the window, to the wall. I don't even want to do a broadcast after Tao Flix intro or Gorilla Gems intro. I just want to fucking end it. Well, that's it right there. You just heard it. It's the whole thing. It's five minutes.